Ladies and gentlemen, may we ask everyone to please get ready as we are about to begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Emerge 22, PBL4 BMA CS IT Students Webinar, a two-day webinar dedicated for fourth-year College of Computer Studies and Multimedia Arts students. But before anything else, please join us for the invocation and for the singing of our national anthem. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Dear God, Thank you for the opportunity to meet together. Please help us to come together to make this institution reflect your kingdom. Breathe life into our ideas and decisions. Help us build a team that has love and respect at its heart. Give us the strength to continue working for your kingdom in this time of pandemic. Lord, come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within, wherever we are. Inspire our thoughts, discussions, and ideas, and continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth for the greater glory of you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Commence this event, it is our honor to welcome the Director of the College of Computer Studies and Multimedia Arts of FEU Alaba, Dr. Jofferson Bombasi, for the opening remarks. Hello and welcome to Emerge PBN4 webinar. While there are still obstacles and hurdles associated with the pandemic, the fact that this is a virtual event rather than a face-to-face -face meeting underscores the need of coming together this afternoon for a beneficial and rational webinar. The subject of today's webinar is critical for programmers and developers as well as those working in the field of multimedia. Software packaging is the process of combining all the files source codes, resources, and assets into a single usable product in order to increase its marketability and investment value. As a result, the tips our guest experts are about to share with us is rather interesting. Recently, the Philippine Software Industry Association recognized FEU Alabang's membership elevating our project's standards and quality. Bear in mind that in the software industry, they do not deliver software directly, but rather the software package. You can make your apps more controllable and cost-effective by packaging and standardizing them. 
As a result, we've assembled eminent speakers here today to discuss software and project packaging. We extend our compliments to the event's organizers, as well as to our tenacious advisors. Without further ado, I'd like to announce the start of Emerge PBL4 webinar. Thank you and have a good time at the event. Thank you, Dr. Jefferson Bombasi. We also want to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Ray Carlo Abacan for joining us here today. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Emerge 2022. I am Tim Gingona. And I'm Lulu Anarkyo, your host for this amazing event today. Yes, we are both eager today as we have a lot in store, including two of the three guest speakers joining us today. And from what I've heard, they'll be delving deeper into how we should package our project after its completion. Right, Lulu? Exactly. One will be more gear geared towards films and animation, while the second one will be more towards software, games, and web applications. Now, before anything else, Tim and I will remind everyone of the flow of the event. This event is divided into two parts day one and day two. We are currently at our day one session and it will be conducted from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. The webinar will feature two of our guest speakers and a Q&A portion afterwards. Our day two session will be tomorrow, March 19, where the program will run from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. So make sure to stay with us until the end and answer the evaluation form for the day. That is right, Lulu. And for the summary of the speakers, the event will start off with Mr. Ken Leviste in Going Pro for BMA, How to Package Your Capstone Project and Yourself, to be followed by Ms. Athena Abe in Going Pro for CS and IT, How to Package Your Thesis or Capstone Project and Yourself. Then, for day two, we have Mr. Fitzgerald Villafuerte in Demystifying the Cryptocurrency Space. Such an exciting lineup, Tim. Mm -hmm. But before we begin, just a reminder to please make sure your microphones and cameras are off to avoid interruptions during the event. And now, let's proceed to our first guest speaker. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> so our first speaker is an alumnus of FU Institute of Technology and finished BS Entertainment and Multimedia Computing in 2020. He's now a registered film director by the Film Development Council of the Philippines. A few of his many projects includes directing a short film called Last Sem Nani Peter in 2020, which was awarded in many events such as the Video Home Festival, the CNC Club Film Festival, as well as the VidC Jury Awards in 2020. He also directed many projects. To name a few are Faker Fact with AC Bonifacio, the Panasonic Projector Launch, the FEU Hall of Greats, G sa EBC, and the music video Bilyum Bilyum Panalangin in 2021. He also directed and produced Mission Vision 2021, a documentary film that won Best Documentary, most child-friendly documentary, and best poster of the Young Adult Division at DocuBata 2021. A multimedia producer and video director, please welcome director Kenneth Peterson Leviste. Hi everyone, thank you very much for having me. Uh, hi, Zulua and Timothy. Uh, Hello, nice Derek. Hi. Hi, it's fine. It's really nice to meet you guys. And I've been waiting for this uh, Day talaga to come because uh, this is very special to me, especially um, FU is where I came from, and it's it's a pleasure to have here again. And I, I know uh, I've been in FU uh, a lot of times, FU Techs, FU Binimans, FU Alabang, and this is very nice to be here again. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much. So, before we start, uh, may I know, uh, Luluwa and Timothy, uh, Sino ba yung mga kasama natin ngayon dito? Pakilala, sila naman ang pakilala niyo ba? Yes, Derek. So, so uh, the people we have here now are mostly fourth-year students of FU Alabang. So we have students from IT, um, from MMA, and from computer science. 
And we also have a few, for, one of our guests also here with us today is Ms. Atina Abe and uh, Dr. Ray Carla Bacan, which is one of our course advisors. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. So, okay, uh, without further ado, I think uh, everyone is waiting. Uh, will I start? Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay. Sige. Can I ask for us? Ayun. Can I, thank you very much. So, ayun lang din. Uh, before we start, I would just like to tell some uh, uh, an overview. So, bale, uh, I'm not a really fan of uh, pulling power, uh, PowerPoint presentations and uh, tawag dito na pag, alam nyo yan, nag parang may kausap, parang nag ano lang, pag nag online class, yung mga typical na nakakaantok na boring na presentation. I'm really not a fan of that. <laughs> as much as possible, I want to engage with you guys. So, dito sa ano ko, sa presentation ko, uh, meron tayong mga interaction dito. And ayun, um, uh, Luluwa and Timothy, uh, para lang din tayong mag-usap dito like a podcast. Don't worry, uh, I won't be flowing na very technical na mga ano, mga engagement sa inyo. So, um, for for how to package your project yourself in industry, my talk would be entitled Tara G sa Industry. So, uh, an overview of our um, webinar is first is transition from thesis, uh, careers for creatives, the playing fields for BMA and ITBA, next is establishing your resume and yourself, and lastly, setting up your portfolio. So, ito yung mga, uh, ano nat, uh, ito yung mga tadaanan natin for today. But before that, thank you very much for uh, introducing me professionally. So, uh, again, I am Ken. I am 22 years old. Uh, just to further introduce myself, uh, I'm a filmmaker, multimedia producer, and an entrepreneur. And I started a multimedia production with my college buddies at 21. And I have been uh, engaging and having webinars and workshops with different uh, universities such as um, Adamson University, Ateneo de Manila University, Arellano, CIIT. So it's an honor again in my home court, in my home court, I have been invited once again. So here are my notable works na sinasabi nila din kanina, so you can have a visual, uh, you can have visual reference. So uh, pinaka-proud ako na ginawa ko dyan is yun nga, I've been doing uh, FEU digital ads hanggang ngayon. And we started from our award-winning films and I'm happy to tell you guys that we currently have eight award-winning short films that won in various uh, international and national competitions. So, yun, yun lang naman din ako. And just, I think, wala tong sound. Teka, share ulit. And to share you, uh, to share you how, what I've been working for for the last uh, years that I've been with Argo. So ito ang aking official multimedia video. Ayun, I hope you enjoyed yung aking uh, multimedia reel. So, enough of uh, enough of the introduction. So, let's proceed to our presentation. So, ayun guys, uh, 
kahit kahit kaya Timothy and Dulo, I want you, I want to know, um, kumplituin naman natin yung sentence na to. Five years from now, I am or I am a blank. So let's see on our chat box kung ano kayang minamanifest ng mga pamaraos natin in five years from now. Ikaw pa, Timothy, five years from now, how do you see yourself? Wow, Derek, that's an interesting question. I feel like that's a perfect question for Lulua. Sige nga, Lulua. Lulua. Anong, anong... Okay. Five years from now. Um, five years from now. Uh... CEO, professional photographer yeah. daw. Um, simple lang. I want to travel to a lot of countries. Travel to a lot of countries. Okay. So, ayan, kaya mo tinulong to. It's because we software developer daw, sabi ni Andre, eh, sabi ni LA CEO. And, and that's billionaire, sabi ni Ron Lara. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Manifesting that. In five years, kaya yan. Ito ang dami, oh. Game developer with five kids, sabi ni Chester. <laughs> okay. Okay lang din yan. Um, kaya ako tinanong to sa inyo, guys. Five years from now, ako naman din. Five years from now, I am a prominent uh, blockbuster director and uh, CEO of a multi uh, of a multimedia company. So yun yung minamanifest ko five years from now. Kaya ako tinanong to guys kasi fourth year na fourth year na kayo and your career journey starts now. Kaya ta- kaya etong webinar na rin ito is para sa inyo dahil we are preparing you or parang orientation niyo rin na rin to papunta sa labas. So, ito yung mga kadala. I don't know if all of you or most of you, pero I think, ito kasi yung naiisip, naiisip namin no, nung 40 ako, and I hope baka naiisip nyo rin, like, what's next after our thesis? Wala pa akong company for internship. Sana ko after graduation, ala, hindi pa ako ready sa industry. And what will be my first job? It's okay to overthink about these things. Uh, however, we also need to be prepared for it. So I think most of us na, na ano to. Kaya this, uh, this discussion that I will be having with you is uh, will resolve these uh, questions and statements in your mind. So ayun. Let's start with transition from thesis. Okay, may green book na ako. So ano na? What happens next? After the thesis natin, you, uh, usually internship na yung kasunod and project exhibition and uh pagpap ano pag magsi na kayo sa ano sa campus nyo for out of four hawak ni green book nyo tama ba guys tapos na ba kayo doon hindi pa tapos ano may green book na kayo so far Derek wala pa but <laughs> that's going to be the last step no po after our step. conference okay after the conference yes po so, sige para prepare din kayo pag nakuha niyo yung green book nyo Ito yung mga pwede niyong gawin. Uh, your thesis could go to research conference and colloquiums. So I think uh, your good professors and department are inviting you na, uy, ipasa niyo dito, ipasa niyo sa Japan, ipasa niyo sa uh, DLSU. It's because uh, FEU is great in, ha- uh, dito, in building and nurturing research uh, in research of students. And Ayan, uh, lagi tayong nananalo at napipili sa mga colloquiums national and international. Uh, pwede nyo rin isali kung meron man kayong film or, anim- uh, or animation so in film festivals and animation competitions. Uh, for example, Animahe Nation, we're in isa sa FEU Tech na, colloqu- uh, na research, uh, na thesis rather, ay nakapasok sa Animahe Nation Top 20 last year. At Sinimalaya, pwede nyo rin ipasa kung yung uh, thesis nyo is film. So, after nun, we are going further. We are leveling up. Graduation na. So, we have to be ready after na internship. After the internship pa lang, we have to be ready. So, uh, dito pa lang, paghahandaan na natin to. So, let's G. Tara sa industry. Kaya, we will be starting in finding the careers for you. So, for careers for creative, lagi nilang sinasabi, tatanong nila ako nun, Multi- uh, uh, iyo, anong sa ano, anong sa bawang? Multimedia arts ko. Ano yun? Ano ba yun? Maskong ba yun? Kinang kadalasan. Ayan, alamin, uh, 
Kayo ba mga BMA diyan? Ano bang sinasagot niyo pag tinatanong kayo yung anong BM, kung ano yung BMA, ano yung multimedia arts? Let us know in the comment section. Ayun, tatanong sa akin, malaki ba sweldo doon? Ayun, tayo natin. So, actually, nabuo uh, quick background lang. Kaya nabuo ang multimedia arts. It was pioneered Uh, one of the pioneers of it was De La Salle College of St. Benil way back 10 to 15 years ago. Ginawa nila ito um, to cope up with the high demand for technology and digital needs. Especially uh, graphics, video, animation, and video. Bakit, and companies are thinking, bakit pa kami magkakaroon ng apat na tao? Bakit pa kami magkakaroon ng apat na tao? Eh kung kaya naman ng isa. And that is the purpose of multimedia arts. Uh, they are nurturing us to be one man team. So ito yung mga uh, careers na pwede nating pasukan as multimedia artists and creatives. Uh, ayun, nakakita natin. From, pwede tayo mag multimedia producer, web design, art director, animator, video game designer, uh, tawag dito, in, web uh video director, and and such. And animator din, pwede tayo maging student paid yan. So the, according to uh, payscale.com, the average or the mean uh, base salary for multimedia designer is ranging to 243,980 a year. So, kung monthly yun, siguro mga nasa 20,000 to 30,000 na ganang kikitain ng entry level. Which is good na rin talaga. Especially kung kaka-graduate mo pa lang. Kaya sinasabi, pag sinasabi na nila sa inyo na walang pera sa arts, ayun, uh, medyo meron sa umpisa. It's because uh, boom, uh, in demand ngayon ang multimedia and digital courses. So what are the popular skills for multimedia designers? Ayan, graphic design, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe After Effects, video editing, and of course multimedia designer. So, in, so pagka-graduate nyo, um, mga, ayan, sa mga BMA natin dyan, uh, if, pinag, if, nag uh, if uh, you are asking or knowing kung magkano yung, mga, yung pwede nyo matanggap na base salary, dapat iikot lang yan sa 20,000 to 30,000. Otherwise, underpaid kayo. I recommend huwag nyo tatanggapin pag ganun yung job offer sa inyo. Pag 20,000 din. Next. Ayan, sige. Speaking of which of sweldo, magkano ang ina-expect at gusto niyong unang sweldo? Kahit sino yan? Uh, let's see on our chat box. Mag Pagka-graduate nyo, ano ang magkano ang ina-expect nyo nga magiging sweldo nyo? Okay, sabi ni Chester, 30,000. At least 20,000. Ayan. Magkano? 25 to 30k. That's good to know. Kasi pag bumaba na yun talaga sa ano, considering na fresh grad, 25 to 30k talaga. Yes, that's ano. Uh, yun nga talaga. 25 to 25,000 uh, to 30 to 30,000. Goods na yun. 20k. Goods na. At, ex except kung breadwinner ka talaga, uh, kailangan mo buhayin yung pamilya at tumulong kila mama at papa. Uh, I think 30,000 dapat sa'yo. Kasi uh, para sa akin, sa akin, ang monthly expenses ko, uh, every winner din ako, is kumapatak na 15,000 to 18,000. So I have to earn 30,000 a month para mabalansi ko yung ano na, yung uh, mabalansi ko rin, yung syempre may iba pa tayong pangangailangan. Of course, uh, Lazada birthday sale na. Mga ah, ganun. O kaya, ah, panggala natin or mga pang IT service. So, here are the playing fields naman for BMA and ITDA. So, para kanino ka ba? Entertainment, sa agency, sa freelancing. O, ito natin. Malay mo, para sa kanya. O, ba? Diba? Ayan nga, tama din si Jens na may tax pa yon, May kantas pa yon na SSS, PhilHealth, uh, pag-ibig. So, going back, uh, alamin naman natin pagka-graduate natin, kung saan tayo pupunta. Kung saan yung mga playing fields na pwede natin puntahan as creatives. 
So, ito sila. May mga key players sa creative uh, industry. So, first is advertising. Ayan, animation, entertainment, and media. Film and video, freelancing, game development, graphics and print, and web and tech. So, ayan guys, nakikita, at least nakikita nyo na ang daming pwedeng puntahan bilang isang creative at bilang isang uh, multimedia arts. Hindi lang siya basta uh, hindi lang siya basta sa design design pag sinabi, ah, multimedia art, design design ka lang pwede. You could go to a wide pool with a, with a wide pool of industries. So, et, so uh, go, proceeding forward, uh, eto naman yung mga companies that I recommend na pwede nyo pasukan or pwede nyo uh, pag-internshipan. Kasi these are the top companies that could be uh, giving you uh, enough compensation, growth, and skills. So, ayan. First, sa advertising, sa Publicis Group. Si Publicis Group is one of the top advertising agency in the Philippines. Pag nanonood, kung nanonood man kayo ng TV, I think 40 to 50% is gawa ng Publicis Group. Gigil, ayan. The infamous for making controversial and very uh, trending commercials. Yung RC Cola, yung sa 13, yung sa, tawag doon is, uh, yung Eurat, hindi siya, hindi siya Euratech, nakalimutan ko. Ayan, and yung they are very, not sa Netflix, they are very notorious for making advertisement. And Audify, uh, one of the leading advertising companies in the Philippines. So, sa mga animators, so sa mga animators naman natin dyan, we have Toei Animation, uh, Rocket Ship Studios. Rocket Ship Studios, guys, yun yung gumawa ng Hayop Ka. At saka, uh, yung ano, Sasha sa Saturna, sila yung gumagawa ngayon ng ano, Rocket Ship. And ayun, yung Papa na rin, um, yung mga anin man, which is pangarap ko ng most of the animators na makapasok sa Pixar Animation Studios. So, going forward, sa entertainment and media naman, ito naman yung mga pwede nating pasukan. Of course, ito yung mga kadalasang ina-expect nila pag media, pag media student ka. Uh, kunyari, yung tita mo, uh, tatanungin ka, saan ka magtatabaho pagka-graduate mo? Sa ABS ba? Sa GMA? <laughs> Hindi po eh. So, ayan. So, mga entertainment and media companies yun. Uh, very overrated lang sila kasi sila yung, uh, kasi mass media sila. So, ina-expect ng kung may mga hay mga BMA natin diyan, if naranasan niyo rin, if naranasan niyo rin 'yon. Um <laughs> ito na lang din. Uh this claim uh, I just wanted to share to you. Hindi naman sa sinisiraan ko sila or degrading their reputation. However, sa mga multi uh, sa mga big media companies, the entertainment, they don't usually compensate well. Ayun na lang yung term. So yan, CNN, Viva. And sa film and videos naman, we have Globe Studios and TVA. Sila Globe Studios yung gumawa ng Goyo. Tapos yung TVA yung gumawa ng I'm Drunk, I Love You, uh, General Luna, and Arcade Film Factory na gumagawa ngayon ng mga commercials din. Sila, sila yung mga, si Arcade Film Factory yung kadalasan kinukuha ni Publicis para maging production ng mga commercials nila. So, sa freelancing naman, uh, we have Upwork, Freelancer, and Fiverr. You could go to those websites to get more leads and to get more clients. Sa game development, we have Ubisoft, Synergy 88, and Moonton. Kumukuha ang Moonton from uh, from uh, third-party gaming uh, gaming company sa Pilipinas. So, uh, pag a game developer ka, pwede ka rin makuha sa, ano, sa Moonton, uh, ma-outsource ng Moonton. So, sa graphics and print, of course, my favorite Canva. Ang ganda ng ang ganda ng compensations nila diyan. Summit Media, Rappler, and sa web and tech. So ayun, kung meron man tayong mga developers dito na magaling din mag-design from CS and IT, you could also be um going into this uh field. Union Bank, GCash, Accenture, ang gaganda ng mga multimedia ano nila, ng mga website nila, ng mga app so, these are the companies that I recommended sa mga playing fields na pwede nyo puntahan. And, uh, if uh, you're asking then, bakit wala ako sa, bakit wala ako sa isa sa mga yan? Uh, 
um, actually, um, I was really planning to go to ABS-CBN, to go to Globe Studios. However, during that time, pandemic happened. So, what nangyari na lang then is I continued uh, going further dito sa Artist Digital. Dati kasi freelance, freelance lang kami na magkakasama. Uh, Kinarir ko na siya. So, I made my passion, my profession na lang. So, ayan. The next natin, alamin naman natin sa ating uh, audience kung where's your dream company. So, ayan. Chat, chat, chat nyo naman dyan, guys, kung saan ang pagka-graduate nyo, saan nyo gusto magpabaho. Okay lang maging idealistic. Canva. Ayan. Great choice. IBM. <laughs> Wait, sino so ba ito? FEO Alabang. SMN. Entertainment, ABS, Riot, Riot Games, SM Entertainment, Dance Maria. Oh. And this is great to know, guys. May nag-reply, may nag-chat lang dito si Ray Carlo, FU Alabang. May I know why? Bakit FU Alabang? Magpo-professor ka ba? Google, Tecmo, Riot, Riot. Yes, Google, TikTok, Apple, or Microsoft. Microsoft. Ah, kaya pala. <laughs> Sorry mo, sir. Hi, hello po. Kaya pala. Canva and Hyperbeard. Ayan. It's great to know, guys. So, if meron talaga kayong mga dream companies na gusto niyong pasukan pagka-graduate niyo, I suggest, ngayon pa lang, guys, i-prospect niyo na yung company na yun. Alam niyo na yung company profile. Alam niyo na how to get there and ready yourself. At sakto naman, yun yung pag-uusapan natin sa webinar na to. Ikaw ba, Timothy? Ano ano mo? Com- dream company mo? Nako, direct. <laughs> well, well ano initially, I was, I was thinking maybe Google or Amazon Google or maybe Apple. Apple. That seems pretty, you know, luxurious, I guess. But okay, I, I, I don't mind probably companies that are startups that have the same, you know, vision as what I want you know, a project that we're passionate about. That would also be nice, I think, for me. Okay lang, okay lang din yan. That is actually nice na open, at least open kayo sa mga other companies. Kasi siya, kasi syempre, uh, it's, it is really unpredictable what will happen pagka-graduate nyo. Kagaya ko, na-expect ko, magpo-professor ako sa FEU, na-expect ko, papasok ko ng uh Globe Studio however I'm I I was put in a different uh <laughs> in a different track pero okay din naman so okay din i manifest natin yan that we will be get, uh, we will be going to our dream companies yes manifestation <laughs> manifestation talaga ayan oh Canva so yeah I I'm, I'm hoping for uh, no, some of the waiting at BMA and at the natin dito na makapasok tayo sa ating dream companies so Para makuha natin yun, let's do it uh, step by step. Okay, let's start with establishing your resume and yourself. It's because first impressions last and gets the job. Naalala ko, naalala, naalala ko nun na yung first time ako uh, nakasalan sa job interview. Uh, nung, nung pandemic yon that was 2020. So, ang, tinan- ang tanong sa akin nun ng HR is, Sabog, sabog din kasi ako nun, hindi talaga ako prepared. Uh, and in a plan to advertising agency. So sabi, so ang tanong niya sa akin, so what is your weakness? Eh ako nasabog nun. Sabi ko, her eyes. Sabi ko, ha? Sa pag ano yung HR. So natawa na, natawa na lang din siya. Tapos, ayun, uh, wala ako sa adver- advertising agency ngayon. <laughs> kasi dapat talaga pinagahandaan yun. And yun yung mali ko. First, because first impressions last. Kung ano yung, kung ano ka nung umpisa, tatagal yan hanggang matapos ka doon. Ayun. I'm very sorry. Sabog talaga ako ng time na yun. So, kailangan natin, so, kailangan talaga natin ma-establish yung sarili natin. And kaya, yun yung ginagawa ko rin ngayon. So, let's start with the creative resume must-haves. So, my resume is just my example kasi hindi naman siya perfect. It's just, Ito lang, in-apply ko lang din kasi yung natutunan ko for two years. Uh, na ano ko lang yung, eh, natutunan ko lang for two years. Tapos, uh, 
Ito yung mga dapat na meron kayo. So, yung una yung picture, optional yan. Optional, optional ang picture. Um, tapos, ito yung mga must-haves pa natin. So, una, demon profession. Ayan. Uh, wait, like six nilang dahil sa. Uh, can you give me a two to five minutes? May dumadating na, na shop. Wait lang talaga. I'm, I, I really have I really apologize. Can you team with the uh, stuff of engagement? Wait, five, of course, five no problem po. No problem no there. Grabe naman po. Kanina ko pa pinapaano yung ngayon lang dumating. Thank you. All right, that was <laughs> rough to a good start. <laughs> yes, so I think everyone can relate to the deliveries, especially now the pandemic. Uh-huh. What's it, what was your favorite part of the presentation so far? Yes, so I think it is really enlightening to see the different companies that are available for, you know, no matter what path you are on. So how about you? Well, so far, I think what I guess sometimes a bit shocking to me was when Derek mentioned about how sometimes we have this goal to be part of the big names here in the Philippines and it turns out they actually don't compensate well. So I guess that's pretty interesting concept thinking like other people would prefer having to have like, you know, that in their resume as someone to be, let's say, uh, to have worked in ABS-CBN or GMA and knowing within themselves that it doesn't pay much anyway. Um, how about you? Would you think you would prefer that to build your res resume or do you think um, having a better salary would be <laughs> yeah, a so lot better for you? Good question. Um, I think, um, so I think like having big name companies does help with resumes. So I think especially when you're starting out, so usually people just accept even though it's low compensation, like low salary because I think after that when mm -hmm. people see your resume then they would um, based on that they would increase your salary after so yeah that's probably, true hmm, how about you would you uh, accept <laughs> a, a big offer or like you know a big name company but low salary I don't know that's such a hard I feel like I well, based on my answer earlier, I said I wanted to work for Google, which mm. I'm guessing the, their competition is great. But mm. maybe even talking about local companies, I would probably say yes, just for the experience. I know it's mm. a, such a privileged answer, but I don't know. I think it's fun to see what happens behind the scenes in these, you know, larger or more well-known companies. Yes, that but, is yeah. true. I think. Just having experience in general is always good. Yeah, that's true. I think that's something we should we should ask um, Derek mm -hmm. Ken later what yes. he thinks about that exactly, right? Yes. You should ask him that. Yes, I wanted to interject back. earlier, but <laughs> mm -hmm. he was going on and on. I didn't want to interrupt mm -hmm. him. So, but don't worry, we have Q and A portion later, so you can ask. Yes, that like is everyone. right, guys. We have we have a Q and A. Um, portion later so if you guys have questions make sure to prepare them and send them as early as possible because yes. we cannot accommodate all the questions so mm -hmm. first come first serve um yes don't be shy just uh, send them um in the chat box and we'll just read them out for you mm -hmm. we have we have a message here from adrian garcia saying yes. well, let's go tim and go lalua <laughs> Yes. And from Al Noor, go Tim. Thank you so much for the Thank support, you guys. Thank so much. And also, uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Dr. Jofferson Bombasi for joining us here today. Oh, he's here now. Well. Yes. Hello, Dr. Jofferson Bombasi. Welcome. I'm, we're glad you're able to, to join us today. And then another link here from one of our committee members, Arjen Salas. So you can now submit questions for uh, to our Google form, which will be answered by our guest speaker later. So the links are in the chat box.
All right, another message mm-hmm. here. Okay, so, so yeah, Ilulua, mm-hmm. <laughs> what else is there to say for this event? Yes, so we have another speaker later, so tune in for that. And I think everyone, um, I think everyone here is a fourth year student, so almost mm-hmm. everyone would be starting their internships soon. So yes, very sure. soon. I, have, I believe mm-hmm. it's going to begin in a month or two. Yes, so I I assume that everyone's a bit nervous. They probably are. Mm-hmm. Yes. The topic is actually pretty timely, especially we're in this exact week where I think most of us are already trying to send our resumes. Have you done yours? Yes, actually. Um, today's the deadline. <laughs> so I'm... Um, so I think uh, I heard that some people already got calls from mm-hmm. companies. Oh, they have? Yeah. But I haven't heard any from them yet. But hopefully <laughs> everything goes well for them. Yeah. And speaking of resumes, what are the best projects that you guys you know, have listed in your list of projects? How about you, Lulua? Yes, and other and and also all the participants, other please, well. yes, please tell us. We them. actually want to know <laughs> what are the projects that you've done mm-hmm. in this in the course of four years that you've listed in your resume and you're really proud of. Mm, yes, I uh, guess you could start, Lulu. That is a good question. Um, I would say, I mean, what, one of the biggest projects would be our pieces right okay so what and is then, it about ah good for you to, <laughs> maybe you can share to them to, to tell uh to ask me that when um we're actually in the same group so please oh, go yeah. ahead <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i guess i could share that i think this is one of the most advanced yes please do project that we've created right mm-hmm. um called i illuminate mm-hmm. which i think is an interesting concept where you know, we're able to capture the eye movement and the subtle changes that it does while watching a TV commercial. And we're able to see which part of the TV commercial actually is engaging to the user and which part uh, has very minimal engagement. So from there, we're able to maximize, you know, the time and the length of the TV commercial. Because, you know, we know that in TV commercials, it's really expensive every second of airtime, right? So... I think that's an interesting concept that we have created with iIlluminate was to, you know, produce shorter and more, I would say, effective, effective TV commercials. So, yeah, I guess that's yeah. mine and that's yours. <laughs> yes, that's Do we have any other participants here who wants yes. to share their, their projects, their yes, best projects uh, that they in- included mm-hmm. in their resume? Which, by the way, I think today is the last day of the resume submission. So yes. if you haven't already, please make sure to submit that in uh, the Ayala office. Am I right? Yes. Please don't forget that. 11.59. Really <clears throat> mm, yes. Um, so we have an, like a message from Juan. So he said, in terms of enjoyment, my favorite project was our four picks, one word extreme edition for our Python course. So, ooh. so that's a game, right? Four picks in one word. Oh. Extreme edition. What does that mean in extreme edition? How did you transform it to be hmm. extreme from the ordinary? Yes. Uh, so we have the questions were timed. Hmm. What do you mean by that? So there's probably like a time limit for guessing. Ah, oh, I, I don't like time-pressured games. <laughs> yes, that is a bit hard. So maybe that's why it's titled Extreme. Yeah. All right. Um, but I've noticed yeah. some people are actually quite good with these kinds of games. Yes. Um, some people really are, you know, made for this type of stuff. Uh-huh. And the so, whole alphabet was given to the player instead mm-hmm. of just a selection of letters. Oh, ah, so okay, yeah, that, that is makes hard. It, that yeah. makes it really hard. Yeah. All right. And so we have another answer from Adrian Garcia. So for him, um, 
It's my group's FEU tour, which is a 360 interactive tour of the FEUA campus. Wow. So do you guys update that every time they make changes to the building? Oh, that's a good question. Or, or is it just more like indoor, indoor mm -hmm. tour? Yes. Oh. Yes, we had to. We had to. Also, did you guys have you guys visited the campus recently? Yes. Do you have to? How about you, Lula? Have you visited the campus? Um, no. <laughs> Ever since the pandemic started, I haven't yet. I mean, I've seen it in pictures. There seem to be so many new improvements, especially in the entrance area mm. and how the building is now with all the ah, yes. blue sheets put down. Yes. Looks really nice. Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I would be, um, you know, I would like to visit the chapel. I don't think I've been inside. Oh, we have direct uh, Ken back. Oh. I thank you, Lulua and Timothy, for uh, entertaining our audience. So uh, I apologize for the delay. So Oh, no worries, Pop. Yes, thank no you very worries. much. I really love your stories. Hope makakita ka, makita ko rin kayo sa FU and about you. Oh yes, please. So, ayun, so. Narinig ko din kanina na magpapasa kayo sa ayalap ng resume. Yes, direct, yes. So, sakto. Ito, ito yung mga ano natin. So, ito yung, going back, uh, the creative resume must have, ayun, yung name and profession. Dapat merong contact info. Uh, ayan. Pag sa contact info nyo, yung address nyo, kahit yung barangay and city na lang, huwag yun na ilalagay yung full address. Tapos LinkedIn profile, ilagay nyo doon. Then yung contact number na laging accessible sa inyo. Hard and soft skills. Ayan, itong profile and skills na nilagay ko dyan. Um, just put the skills that are really necessary for the profession that you are applying for. For example, ako nag a ako as multimedia producer or video director. So ilalagay ko yung mga hard skills na kakilanganin para doon. As well as the soft skills na kakilanganin bilang, bilang isang director. Wag na nating ilalagay yung mga talents natin like singing, dancing, um, performing. Hindi yun kailangan ni HR. Wa, uh, so yun na yung makakailangan din natin ng mga hard skill and soft skills. Hindi rin natin kailangan yung patience. Uh, ano pa ba? Tawag dito. Understanding, loving. As much as possible, don't put those things sa ano, soft skills mo. Educational background. Sa educational background naman, guys, uh, kahit high school lang or senior high school nyo lang, saka college, hindi na natin kailangan ilagay simula elementary. Walang pakailan mga mga HR kung saan ka elementary. Ang importante is your higher education and your secondary education. And ilagay nyo doon yung mga honors nyo and mga awards. For example, I was an academic scholar and commission ng TED Scholar nung ako'y college. Pati kunyari, uh, kunyari ng senior high ka, lahat ng pwede mong ipagmalaki, ilagay mo doon. Kunyari, uh, Paranaque Science High School with highest honors, ganun. So ilalagay, so, ilalagay talaga natin lahat yun. Next is career chronology, itong experiences. So, kaya siya tinawag na career chronologies because you will arrange your experiences based on the, uh, based on the time that you've been there. So, uh, so uh, ayan, ang latest ko, Director and Chief Operating uh, Officer of Parkers Digital, hanggang ngayon kasi siya. And, the, and sometimes then, pwede rin siyang uh, by uh, hierarchy. Kung mas importante yung pagiging, uh, pagiging kunyari, senior graphic designer mo kaysa sa junior designer mo, unahin mo yun. Kasi uh, unahin mo yung mas importante. And portfolio. Sa so, portfolio natin, guys, ilalagay na rin ilalagay na rin natin dito lahat ng projects and awards that we had. For example, ayan, dati na ni Peter, ayan, nakasulat dyan yung uh, mga awards niya, tapos nakasulat dito yung mga projects natin. Very important to mga creatives, mga BMA, para sa mga HR, it's because they want to see, ayun na nga, anong nagawa mo? Uh, anong ambag mo? Ayun ang mga kakailanganin talaga ng mga HR from you. And of course, technical background, eto uh, lumang nasa lumang nasa lumang ano ko na to eh nasa lumang resume ko na tong software na to eh inalis ko na to pero pag dalalagay ko ng technical background not each, not all HR and not all uh, professionals are knowledgeable or aware of the software na pinaglalagay niyo diyan 
So, mali ba ni HR kung anong PR, anong AE, anong PS? So, ilalagay niya dyan kung anong software siya. Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, and so on kung ano man ginagamit niyo. And please, 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 huwag kayong maglalagay ng mga ratings, ratings sa resume niyo. For example, Adobe Photoshop 9 out of 10. O kunyari, Digital Drawing 7 out of 10. Huwag na huwag kayong maglalagay ng ganun. Uh, Una, hindi siya professional courtesy. Pangalawa, yung ratings nyo na yon walang enough basis. At pangatlo, pampasikip lang yun sa resume. So kung sino man ng mga BMA dyan or ITDA na may ganon sa resume, bukas pa naman ang patahan, please pakitanggal na. Kasi uh, hindi talaga kailangan yon Malalaman nila ang skills mo, hindi sa ratings na nilagay mo sa resume mo. Kung hindi yung video portfolio mo or yung behance mo pag nakita nila, doon nila ma-assess. Let the company or the HR assess your technical skills. Hindi ikaw yung mismo maglalagay nun. And make it a one page. Uh, ayaw nila ng sobrang haba. And make it brief, make it concise. At dapat well written yung mga nakasulat sa, nakasulat sa resume natin. Okay lang mag-design don't, just don't do overdo your resume. Kaya, ayan, nakikita nyo sa akin, simple lang siya, tatlong kulay, kulay kasi yan ng artist digital. Hindi uh, na kailangan ng background. Uh, kasi syempre, ipiprint nyo yan. Huwag nyo gawing kulay black yung resume nyo kasi aesthetic. White lang. Kasi, uh, kasi ipiprint nyo yan, tapos black yung resume nyo. Diyos ko po. So, ayun. Going back. Uh, sign up for LinkedIn. Tapos, uh, ayan, importante yan. Facebook for Pro kasi yan. And use the right materials pag pro, ano na kayo, professionals na kayo. Huwag kayong, wag, uh, use the type, the right photos, documents, emails, copywriting, etc. Ayan, kagaya nga nito, gumagamit ako ng iba't ibang images sa iba't ibang uh, websites. Sa iba picture ko sa LinkedIn, sa Facebook, sa Instagram, at kung ano man yung, uh, kung ano man app yung pinakahuli. So, get ready to dress, to impress. It's because we are going face-to-face -face na sa ating mga jobs. And, ayun, dapat lagi tayong well-presented sa papananamit natin. And practice professional ethics, guys. Uh, one of the biggest investment to. Tandaan nyo yung tatlong C, courtesy, communication, and character when doing professional ethics. And uh, for the last part of our, uh, of our presentation, for setting up your portfolio, ayan, para malaman ni, uh, ni, sorry, para malaman ni future company or ni HR yung mga ginawa mo, anong ambag mo at nagawa mo, your portfolio needs to be updated, accessible, concise, and of course, creative. Updated, dapat nandun yung pinakamagagandang gawa mo, latest na gawa mo, accessible, madaling buksan. Kung Google Drive yan, please mag-share, mag make it shareable, concise, Alam ko, mara, uh, alam ko sa of us may maraming gawa, but chosen few, mas okay. Kung sampu lang na best na pinakagawa mo, okay yun. So, sa portfolio building, ito naman yung mga mara-recommend ko na software that you could be doing. Uh, Behance, ArtStation, YouTube, Vimeo, Wix, and Pixpa. Wix and Pixpa, uh, website, uh, pwede ka mag-build ng website portfolio mo dyan. So, yan, sa Vimeo, meron ako sa Vimeo. Hindi ako naglalagay ng mga videos yan. Sa video kasi hindi nakakompress yung video. Kaya mas okay dyan. Saka walang ads. The next is sa Behance. Under din to ng Adobe. Uh, ayan, alam ko meron tayong mga ano dyan, gumagamit ng Behance. Uh, dito nyo ilagay mga graphics nyo, mga drawing nyo. Ayan, this uh, Behance uh, portfolio is by Saxon Campbell. Another portfolio is ArtStation by Tibot Granite na one of the 3D modelers sa Arcane. Ayan, nakikita natin sila ano o. Oh. Sila Jinx. Ayan, pwede kayo maglagay dyan sa art station. And marami kasing artist community of artists dyan. Sa Wix, ayan, uh, photography, photography uh, portfolio ni Robert Jans. Wix is free. Pwede ka makagawa ng portfolio dyan anytime, anywhere. And very accessible yan. And of course, sa LinkedIn din, pwede ka rin makagawa ng portfolio sa LinkedIn. Kagaya yan, uh, may link yung mga projects na nagawa mo. At mariridirect si client or si HR sa mga, uh, sa mga 
ano mga sa mga works. So ayun before uh before I end, tanungin na lang natin one last time. Okay, graduating students, BMA and IPBA. Sa career natin, after this webinar or after this, ano ang magiging first step mo? Ayan, let's see. Natin. Okay, guys, put in your answers. Put in your answers, What guys. is going to be your first step? What is our first step? Because the first step is always the hardest, but it is the most essential in our group. Internship, yes. Okay, build a good resume. Uh, build a great portfolio. LinkedIn account, tama. Ayan, building a solid portfolio. That's right, guys. Kilangan natin mag-invest para sa profession, uh, professionalism natin, guys. Kasi papunta na tayo doon. And that is very important when it comes to industry. Kahit freelancer ka, kahit wala kang boss, kailangan mo pa rin. Ayun. <laughs> okay. Create professionals, connections to LinkedIn. Tama. I like the answer of Shane. Build your network. Because your network is your network. So I before I end I will just give uh some few quotes for you galing sa mga ano sa idol ko na si Steve Jobs it's because the oh, according to him the only way to do great work is to love what you do if you haven't found it yet keep looking and don't settle hangga't you are not getting what you love and sabi rin nga na ex ko noong 2017 doon ka kung saan mahal doon ka sa doon ka sa mahal mo kung mahal mo ang trabaho to kung mahal mo ang profession na to, dun ka. It's because uh, loving something or someone will really motivate and inspire. And ito naman yung sa akin. Just be consistent for your goals so opportunities will consistently come to you. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for listening. So for everyone here, for the, all the creative that we are having here, I would let's uh, do our best Galingan natin sa industry and let's make our imagination sweet. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, here are my references and I think we will be proceeding na to the question and answer part. Sorry lang talaga natagalan. Uh, and may mga pasinga. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, thank you so much, Dirkan. And we are now opening the floor for questions. So, all right. All right, so for the first question, ako muna. <laughs> sige, sige. I'll take this opportunity. So, Derek, you mentioned earlier uh, in the part of my resume, you've explained to us, you know, the importance of the different sections, right? Mm -hmm. So, I guess for me, as someone with no experience and maybe not the best experience, I would say, um, how do we balance that part of making sure we show off everything and trying to hold back a bit just to lower the expectations or like what, uh, what's your thoughts on that po? gets kita kasi <laughs> diba uh, I think most of us achievers talaga and gusto natin ilagay yung lahat ng pinaka na, na, mga nagawa natin at mga awards natin sa resume natin di ba? yes 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 I think you're an achiever as well Timothy so ganito just to balance out minsan kasi I have ako gagaya ako. I have multiple I have multiple resume. May resume ako for director, may resume ako for uh, professor, may resume ako for editor. So, para ma-balance mo siya, ta dapat uh, alamin mo muna yung purpose ng resume mo. For example, ikaw mag-aapply ka ng internship. So, para sa internship mo, ilalagay mo lang doon kung ano yung yan, yung mga basics and necessary. Mm -hmm. And kung kaya yung iba, kaya sila naglalagay ng mga extravagant awards and mm -hmm. portfolio nila. It's because they are introducing themselves with value. Pag na-introduce mo yourself na may value ka, you can demand sa HR na, na a higher pay. Pero kung sa internship natin, balansein mo na natin. Let's just put what's the fundamentals and what's import important na kailangan nilang malaman. And ewan ko, kung bidabida ka, kung gusto mo naman <laughs> discover at ma-absorb sa resume mo, then go. Ilagay mo lahat ng achievements mo para ma-absorb ka nila. For example, ako gusto ko nyari, kunyari, gusto ko mag-apply sa PNG. Uh, tapos gusto ko talaga ma-absorb. Ilalagay ko talaga lahat ng ano na yan. Pero kung hindi naman, if it's just for experience, just go with the basics. Just go with the fundamentals. Ang cons kasi niyan, 
sasamantalahin ka, ma-exploit ka. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kaya, ayun. So, uh, to summarize again, just put what is needed if you are just uh, working for experience and if you are working for growth and uh, absorption and promotion, ilagay mo na lahat ng pwedeng mag- makapagpakita ng value mo. Okay, yeah. that was actually really helpful today. Kasi I'm diba? still, I'm, I haven't made my resume actually for the uh-huh. submission today. So it actually really helped me decide on what to put. So thank you so much. <laughs> Ayun. I hope maging maganda ang resume mo. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. So fine. Now the next question is <laughs> from the participants asking. Okay, let's start with... Hold on. So another submission here is someone was asking, so I'm just curious, I don't have any capital money to start a business, but I would like to know your thoughts about when to choose to work in a company and when to choose to start a business like Arcos Digital. Good question, guys. Actually, yung fourth year ako nung nasa situation nyo ako nung 2020. Gusto ko talaga magtrabaho sa labas, sa corporate world sa ABS, sa Globe Studio, or maging professor. So, how will you know kung papasok ka sa industry or mag, or you're gonna make your own business? Uh, lalo na kung wala kang kapitan. I think, uh, yung sa akin kasi is somehow luck and perseverance talaga yung nangyari. Pero for, for efficiency, kung sure ball talaga, I suggest everyone na lumabas muna kayo. Um, you gain experience in ano uh, i suggest um, go to go go out go, uh, go outside sa industry kasi sa industry nakalatag na yan lahat eh matututunan mo na matututo ka na lang pag nagtayo ka kasi ng business especially fresh grad ka and uh, wala kang puhunan mahihirapan ka talaga eh. so i don't eh, eh, pero kung matapang ka talaga then go kasi ako nag uh, I just had a had I just had courage na i-pursue to kasi nag-pandemic noon at wala akong matang at hindi ako natatanggap sa trabaho. So if wala kang kapital, if uh you don't have enough network and you don't have enough skills and confidence for yourself, I suggest you could start muna uh building yourself sa industry. And two to three to uh, two years after uh, three years, then go. You could also start your own multimedia production. And para ma-enlighten din kayo, Arcos Digit- I started Arcos Digital na hindi maganda. Sumisweldo lang ako just to pay my bills. Sumisweldo lang ako minsan pang grocery ko lang noon. Para lang kaming freelancers na nagsama-sama. It's not a business. It's just like isang kahit, isang kukakam. It's because it's really hard doing business. Lalo na kung fresh cut cut, walang experience. At hanggang ngayon, to be honest with you guys, nangangapa pa rin ako hanggang ngayon kahit meron na akong uh, two years eh, in the state experience. So to summarize, if uh, you are, if uh, if how to know if you will be pursuing an uh, industry or building your own, I suggest uh, you should go to industry first, have experience, have knowledge, have confidence, then go building your own multimedia company. Ayan. Okay. I hope that satisfies your question. Sige, so, ano ba? Thank you so much for that. It's really motivating. And so we have another question. And they asked, if you hadn't been able to pursue film, what mm-hmm. other field of multimedia would you have pursued? And also based on your experience, are there specific fields of MMA that don't do well here in the Philippines? Ang ganda ng tanong, ha? <laughs> Sige. Uh, it's an, it's an eye-opening discussion, especially sa mga BMA natin ngayon. So, if hindi ako nag-film, I think I would be on the academy. I would be on the academy. Mag- Baka nga, yung mga BMA na yun, maging estudyante ko pa yung mga yan. Eh. Nandun ako. Kasi I, I, I am from a family of teachers, nanay ko, mga teacher, tatay ko, uh, supervisor sa DepEd para niya. Okay. Eh. I would be on the academy, pero kung, sa, kung usapang multimedia, siguro nasa ano ako, marketing. Nasa marketing ako. So, ayun naman, if if there are any multimedia uh, 
field na hindi not doing well here in the Philippines it's animation mm. underrated ang animation dito uh for example Japan napaka booming ng animation industry nila so does Korea pumapalad ang South Korea sa CGI ngayon if napanood niya yung All of Us Are Dead yung buong school CGI yun so sa, sa Philippines meron naman mga animation studios pero hindi kasi siya in demand dito it's because of the culture ng entertainment natin dito ang pinaka hit kasi sa atin dito and is ayun niya um, entertainment media rom-coms mainstream film, at hindi siya ganun kumikita when well here sa Pilipinas. Ang nangyayari sa atin na uh, mga BMA, yung mga, mga digital artists natin dyan, is Filipino animators are being outsourced by other countries kasi mura. For example, uh, si yung gumawa ng, ano, ng Lion King, isa sa mga na-outsource doon is si Mambesa. Eh, naging prof niya siguro yan si Mambesa. Mura kasi yung bayad sa mga animators sa Pilipinas. And it's not doing well here. It's because not in demand. Unlike video, very in demand. So, uh, hindi ko naman dinidiscourage yung mga animator dito. Pero sinasabi ko lang din yung uh, what you are going ahead na hindi siya de- uh, in demand here sa Philippines. At mahihirapan kayong makahanap ng trabaho pag animator ka. Ang mangyayari niyan, pag PD animator ka, to the animator ka, magiging digital illustrator ka or magiging multimedia designer ka. However, Uh, wag tayo mapaghinaan na doon. Meron din naman mga uh, animation companies dito sa Pilipinas that could do well. Ayan. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I guess this is a bit related. Um, more about uh, creating projects, own projects. So someone's asked, how can we make money out of our own films or projects? Okay. How do we make money out of our projects? So, sige. Uh, to be to be honest with you, mas mas gusto ko siyempre mas practical ako. So, um, I don't discourage naman yung mga artists natin dito na they are doing art for their love, for their passion. Pero, to be honest guys, kasi tumatanda na tayo. We have to be practical. We have to be, uh, tawag dito, we, do, we have to be purposive, hindi na lang passionate eh. So, dapat, on how to make money for your film or for your project, is first, uh, set the purpose of your project. For example, um, yung film ko, kaya siya kumikita. Kasi, sinasali ko siya sa mga film festivals na malalaki yung prizes. And, naging business na rin kasi namin siya. Kasi, kunyari, mag-i-invest kami ng 5,000 sa film na to. Kasali namin sa competition, manali siya ng 25,000. Bawin ba na? And for example naman, sa ano natin, sobrang booming na ang ano ngayon, ang arts ngayon. If you are also studying about NFTs, non-fungible tokens, gawa ka lang namang artwork mo tapos ibenta mo sa ano sa OpenSea. Kikita ka ng gajillion dollars. So, yun yung mga suggestions ko. And lastly, um, tawag dito, i-freelance mo yung mga gawa mo, ibenta mo yung sarili mo kung mag ka. Uh, yung mga projects mo, uh, i- i-outsource mo yung sarili mo from uh, uh, I, yeah, for example, uh, guys, hello, I am doing uh, portraits, I am doing uh, animations, parang ganun. So, to summarize, um, uh, know the purpose of your output, dapat profit, uh, make it something na profitable. Pangalawa, uh, send your artworks to NFTs, gawin mo siyang NFTs, yun yung pinakamalaki kumita ngayon sa uh, art industry. Pero mahirap, medyo hindi yun, it's not a piece of cake. And pangatlo, uh, sell yourself as doing services for creatives. So, ayun. Okay, so thank you so much. So, now for our next question is from uh, Maynard Quesada. So, he asked, practical po ba if overseas animation sa Japan or South Korea? Hmm. Actually, yes, practical. Pero it's difficult to get there. Uh, mahirap makapasok sa animation industry na nila, lalo na kung hindi ka Japanese. Because, I don't know, uh, 
Kasabi na din kasi ng friend, uh, artist friend ko na natin, Japan, na uh, somehow uh, Japanese animation studios refer Japanese an- Japanese animators. So, kung pero kung gusto mo talaga maging international artist sa Amerika, maraming Pinoy animators sa Pixar. And si ano, uh, kalimutan ko din niya eh. Basta nasa, sila yung isa sa, sa gumawa ng sa app. Naka, I, have, I have met him before. Doon, yun yung mas magiging practical. Sa Japan kasi, uh, medyo mahila. So, ayun. Just to follow up po, Derek. Sige. Um, is, that, is that something to do with language barrier or they just prefer locals in general po? Somehow then language barrier, it's because they are having difficulties in speaking English and some of them are really uh, sinocentric. Uh, ibig sabihin, Japanese first. Ah, uh, okay. So, parang Filipino first. Ayan, Japanese sen- sinocentric sila. Ayoko naman sabihin na xenophobe sila. Xenophobe parang ayaw sa ibang tao na hindi mm-hmm. sa sa nila. Pero they just, they just preferred na kabayan nila. I understand po. Ah, okay, so we have another question here which is more related again to the portfolio side. So someone's asking here, uh, I guess this was a bit related to your earlier answer. Uh, does a portfolio have to be more on the practical side or more on impression kind of side? Mm. Okay. More of the impression side, yung portfolio. Si resume kasi yung practical side. Si portfolio naman is, uh, ayun niya, impression. It's because dapat unang tingin pa lang nila sa portfolio mo, boom, ganda, wow. There's a wow factor agad. May hook agad. Si resume naman practical, It's because it has to be brief, it has to be concise, it has to be uh, factual. Kaya dapat yung portfolio mo, kagaya nga yung sinabi ko kanina sa, ano, sa, sa discussion natin, mm-hmm. uh, mag, uh, creative agad. Dapat unang, uh, unang tingin pa lang nila, wow. Ganun. So it, have, it has to be the, on the impression side. Okay, so so when you say more of like the uh, impression side, uh, is there ever a point where you feel like it, it might be too much na? When, when you say, when you're trying to impress mm-hmm. him too much? Or you just have to it, really go all out? You just really have to go all out. Sa, kasi sa portfolio, wala namang template yan kagaya ng resume na may, uh, may format. Eh. Wala. Uh, yung, yung ano mo, portfolio mo, it's really up to you. Kasi bilang creative, uh, yung portfolio mo, yung way mo, pag, yung way mo to communicate them how creative you are. Mas magandang portfolio, mas okay. Pero, uh, huwag naman sobrang-sobrahan na, ano, basta yung tamang ano lang, yung tamang ayos lang talaga. Pagaya yan, sa art station, ang ganda sa art station, ng mga ano ng mga portfolio nila. Eh okay lang din to go further pero don't uh, put too much extravagance kasi baka mahirapan yung ano yung HR tignan yung ano na yung portfolio. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so ayun, it just have to be concise and accessible. Okay. Con- ayun lang. Um I guess this is a, another question is related uh a bit dun sa, dun sa earlier discussion when you were talking about how you weren't really prepared during the time when you said like um ice did you you answered ice to the inter to the hr i think am i correct nice uh so someone was asking here so how do you market yourself during an interview okay sige. how do you mark how do you market yourself during an interview i don't know if uh, ano, applied to sa lahat ha, pero nung time kasi namin nung multimedia, mga klasiko multimedia arts. Most of them talaga is very introverted and not outgoing kagaya ko. Like parang sa batch namin, ako na yung pinaka, pinaka jolly at pinaka <laughs> ano, energetic. Um, sa, sige, sa akin muna. Okay. I, market, I market myself na someone with leadership capabilities and, ha, and can do creative stuff and I can do uh, general uh, general multimedia skills. So, pag sa interview talaga, um, 
ano talaga, pinapakita ko talaga yung pagiging extrovert ko. It's because uh, leadership and communication uh, will really will really put value to myself. So sa others naman dyan, um, I suggest kung uh, if you are really having a hard time sa interviews, uh, try to build it, build your confidence kahit paunti-unti. Kausapin mo yung try mo interview niyo sa mo sa salamin, try mo magpa-interview sa mama mo or sa sister, sa sister mo. Uh, it's because isa rin yan sa tinetest nila sa ating mga creatives, yung pagiging uh, uh, magaling sa communications. Kasi importante talaga I know most of us freelancers, um, ako din dati, I preferred to work alone. Pero pag nabas ko kasi, marami na akong taong makakasama. Marami na tayong makakasamang creatives din. And we need uh, to communicate well. So that's how you will market yourself bukod sa pagiging creative. You have to be uh, great in communication and you also have to be approachable. Kasi ayaw ng mga HR or mga ng art directors ng masumit na creative. Uh, kunyari, uh, kunyari, meron ako na-encounter na gano'n. Of course, I've been doing art direction na din. Nag-director din ako. Meron na kasong in-outsource natin na creative na uh, ayaw i-revise. Uh, nagpapa-revise ako sa kanya. Tapos, hindi niya daw yung i-revise hanggat uh, tawag dito. Kasi nagpas na daw ng number of divisions. So, sa- so sabi ko sa kanya, na sige I will be giving follow up payments na lang from ano from our client pero pwede mo na bang start ayaw talaga kasi hindi siya very open and other creatives hindi talaga open sa mga suggestions talaga at nakakainis yun so guys kung ayaw kayong kainisan ng boss nyo ayaw kayong kainisan ng mga workmates nyo mm. be approachable be approachable kahit sabihin natin kung hindi kayo approachable basta maging mabait na lang din kayo <laughs> Ganun. Very important yun. Kaya di ba sa professional ethics, kailangan natin yung tatlong C. Communication, char- communication character, and courtesy. So, ayun. Thank you very much for that, ano, for that question. I guess just a follow-up po. So, mm-hmm. in, in that situation where, I guess, hindi uh, talaga sila nakikisama, no? what do you think is like the best approach dun? The best towards, approach them, dun. towards them. Towards them. Is it confrontation uh, or something else? As much as possible, avoid confrontation. Uh, let's be a pacifist na, sige, um, kunyari, um, si ka-workmate mo, uh, ay, ayaw, ayaw magpasa ng 9am kasi daw, di pa daw siya kising nun. Mm-hmm. Okay, sige. Let's meet at the middle. Uh, eto demands ko, eto demands mo. Pag gitna, uh, mag-meet tayo sa gitna. If ayaw niya talaga, eh, it's not your problem anymore. Problem niya na yun. Kung gano'n, hindi isumbong mo sa ano, isumbong mo sa nakatataas. Uh, I would like to complain about uh, creative aids because it's not perform, uh, performing with us. Parang oh, gano'n okay. talaga. That makes sense. Uh, make, make, solution, uh, make solutions rather than uh, magtalo kayo. Kasi pag nagtalo kayo, wala namang mangyayari. Nasolve ba yung problema nyo? Hindi. So, ganun. Make solutions kung paano kayo, kung paano nyo mariresolve ba yung problema nyo. It's because one of the skills na hinahanap din sa industry is the critical thinking and the problem-solving skills. Paano pag yung files mo nabura, e deadline bukas, paano mo gagawin yun? Kailangan nilang ano. So, di ready rin sa mga HR, itatanong din nila sa inyo yung mga ganun ba. Okay. That's good to know po. I, I, I guess another last last follow-up <laughs> regarding that topic. Um, so you mentioned sometimes, I mean, you've experienced working with people who are a bit difficult, right? Have you ever been in a situation where uh, it was really unbearable? The entire experience in a certain company was unbearable? Unbearable? So for what? No, no. Unbe- na unbearable talaga. Kasi kung meron mang unbearable talaga na client or company ng tao, inaalis ko na yan. Tinatang- inaano ko na talaga. So far, we have a good environment at Argos Digital at yung good set of clients din. Um, ayun, if kilala nyo si Sanbon from ITSMBA, she's part of Argos Digital. Oh, wow. Uh, you would also, uh, you could know from her that we have an environment talaga na very friendly. Ayoko ng toxic eh. 
pag toxic talaga kasi pag toxic yung environment niyo that's that will create a domino effect we're in toxic si boss si, so sino mababalingan niya si assistant boss si assistant boss naman mababalingan niya ng galit si ano si Jude, si marketing officer si marketing officer naman mababalingan ng galit si assistant so di ba yes po so ganun pero kung dumating man sa inyo yon or dumating man sa akin um uh, it's uh unahan niyo na agad na I think uh, we are having a bad time in this project. Maybe we could set a meeting pag-usapan natin na paano natin aayusin agad to. Mm-hmm. Kasi as much as possible, uh, gawin natin yung tabaho natin eh. Pangit, pangit sa track record na meron tayong project na ina- inayawan, inalisan. So, pag-usapan nyo na agad at kung hindi talaga, at kung hindi talaga bearable for you, for you, for example, yung boss mo napaka-toxic. It's okay to leave early kung hindi talaga sila nagbabago. Red flag yun eh. At ayaw natin. That's right. <laughs> so would you say the uh, the industry is a lot easier than doing projects as a group, you know, way back in college? Mas malala sa ano sa industry. Oh. Mas toxic dun. Uh, sinasabi ko na sa inyo, bibigira yung sa industry ng creative sa hindi toxic. Oh no. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> no, noted. Get ready na lang. Pero you sabi na nasabi ko rin to dun sa ano sa webinar ko sa NFJP ya sa mga junior Philippine junior Philippine Institute of Accountants na you just have to find where you belong. Kung toxic yung company A, lipat na yung company B. Pag toxic pa rin company C. Pag hindi mo marami akong friends na gano'n na mga kaedad ko ngayon na palipat-lipat ng company kasi they, do, they, couldn't get, they couldn't bear the toxicity sa environment nila. Mm-hmm. Kahit sabihin natin 50,000 sweldo niya, lumipat siya sa 30,000. Oh. Kasi toxic nga talaga. At sobrang uh, the most, pag professional na tayo, uh, last na lang din to, the most valuable possession that we should have is peace. Peace of mind, inner peace, 100,000 yung sweldo mo. Um, hindi ka naman mapalagay kasi ang toxic ng mga katrabaho mo, ang hirap mong pinapagawa sa'yo, an- ano ka, overload ka. Peace mm-hmm. talaga ang pinaka-importante. Kaya you should know to find the right place for you. So, ayun. I really like that, Derek. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that answer. <laughs> Because obviously, especially in the Philippines, you know, there's a lot of, especially, uh, I guess, relatives and parents would say, you know, tiisin mo lang yan. Sayang oh. yung ganito. Right? So, sa <laughs> taon pa, sayang yung 13 month pay. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess that's really nice to hear from someone, you know, to say na, if it's toxic, you should leave, you should quit, oh. you should transfer. Alas ka agad. Mm-hmm. Uh, hindi naman kasi katulad yan sa relationship na kahit marupok ka, nababalik ka. Nabaho ko yan. So, kaya ganun. You should, uh, ano agad. Ayun, I hope na-satisfy ko yung mga question. So, ayun, nakita yes, and- ko na- Yes. No, no, no problem, Derek. We actually have one last question before okay. our time is up. So okay. someone was asking, and this is in general or overall, um, for BMA, digital arts, and even animation students or applicants with zero work experience, what message or what final message or advice do you have for them that you think may help them start from scratch? Okay, thank you very much. Sige, as, an, as a last message for our creative, Um, thank you very much for doing your best. Uh, I, I I think marami na kayo nagawa sa ngayon. Pero if zero experience talaga, zero, wala pang laman yung portfolio natin, uh, let's let's start with a humble beginning. Yun ang pinaka-importante sa lahat. Um, gawa kayo ng gantong projects, kahit hindi bayad, passion projects. The most important thing in building your value and building your creative experience is creating, creating, and creating a lot of projects. Like every, like every, uh, like every month, try to challenge yourself. Dapat this month, may magagawa akong project. May magagawa akong something. Always keep that in your mind. Na uh, kaya nakaka value ang creatives. It's because of their portfolio. Especially sa ibang bansa, wala silang pakialam kung, kung di ka gumadjit ng college, basta maganda ang portfolio mo. 
our portfolio is our best weapon in the industry. And uh, of course, in building yourself as well, um, make yourself very approachable, very professional, and very uh, and very creative in in introduce in introducing yourself outside. And of course, hindi lang naman kasi basta sa galing yan eh. Uh, creativity also comes with character. Magaling ka nga mag-drawing. Pangit naman ang gali mo. Hindi ka pipiliin ng HR. Sorry for the blunt words, pero ganun talaga. Pag ayaw nila ang gali mo, tanggal ka kaagad. Creativity comes with character. So, always bring your creativity with kindness, with generosity, with and hospitality. And for all BMA and ITBA that we will be going now to the industry, I wish you good luck. Galingan nyo. Huwag kayong kabahan. Tapangan nyo lang. It's because the first step is always the most important and it is our uh, best way to get to our day. So thank you very much. Galingan nyo guys. I'm really uh, looking forward for you guys. And sana yung mga, manif mga manifestation nyo kanina na in five years, CEO, in five years, billionaire, in five years, may sariling studio. Sana matupad nyo yun guys. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Ken. Nako. So, for for the one who asked, who asked that question, you remember, you know, humble beginnings. Humble you know, beginnings. Diba? Having a good attitude and willing to do something every month, every week, you know, mm -hmm. trying to build yourself. So, thank you again once again for that. And of course, we want to commemorate, you know, this certificate of recognition to you, Dr. Ken. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, Enjoy that's right. This award is presented to Mr. Ken Lavista for imparting invaluable insights and knowledge during the Emerge 2022 PBL4 BMA CSIT students webinar about the topic Going Pro for BMA, how to package your project and yourself. Given this 18th day of March 2022, signed by Dr. Jefferson Bombasi, CCSMA Director and Engineer, Reynaldo Muli, Senior Director for Higher Education. So, yes, thank you so much, Director Ken. Much. And um, so now for our picture taking. So may I request, um, you know, for us to have a, a small photo shoot. So let's get ready and in three, so, Direct Ken, so are you ready. ready for our picture taking? All right. So and, if, and if, by the way, if, uh, Dr. Jefferson Bombasi wants to join us and Dr. Ray Abahan. Uh, all right. All right, Lily, you can make the countdown. All right, so let's start in three, two, one, cheese. And that is it. Thank you so much again, Dr. Ken Leviste. Um, we really appreciate you being here with us today. And obviously, we, we've learned a lot. It was so fun <laughs> with the discussions. Thank you very much, guys, for having me. I hope uh a I made sense sa mga kalokohang mga pinag sa inyo. <laughs> Absolutely po. Galingan nyo sa future endeavors. I'm really looking forward to see you again, guys. Baka magkita kita tayo sa FEO na bang pag-may shooting kami. Oh, yay. That would be great po. That would be great. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Thank good you luck, so guys, much. For the next. And good luck din sa ating next speaker. And we're looking forward na makaano ulit kayo, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. You may turn off your camera and microphone if you only if you wish to. And yeah, wow, Lulu, that was a great, great start. Yes, definitely. So I learned a lot from, um, you know, from today. And this is just the first speaker. So yeah. Yeah, honestly, I've learned a lot, especially if now I feel like more, I'm more prepared to finally complete my resume and submit it today. <laughs> Yes, How about I feel, you? I feel a lot more motivated to, you know, work hard and, uh, you know, 
uh, start with my portfolio and you know just put all my passion projects there. That is true. I'm just a bit sad that we didn't have enough time. I wanted to ask Derek more about his film Last Ten Nani Peter, which was actually really nice, guys. If you want to watch the film, um, the link is going to be in the chat. You could watch it sometime today. I believe it's streamed in Vidsi. Uh, there we go. The link is in the chat. It's a really nice film. It's, I think, I, I believe it's two months in of the pandemic, and showcasing how, you know, Peter um, was going through his last sem in school during the thesis time. Um, so yeah, that's pretty fun, fun and heartwarming show, yes, or short film rather. Really impressive, especially during the pandemic as well. Yeah, that's true. It's actually really relatable. Fun watch. And what else did you, I guess, what else stuck with you? Yes, so I think especially during the Q&A when he said that, you know, um, if it's a toxic work environment, then mm-hmm. you should definitely leave and not think oh, yeah. about the money. So, I really like that. Uh, yes, and also since, um, you know, especially in the creative field, mm-hmm. you would collaborate and mm-hmm. work with other people so that's definitely important yes that is true and i like when he said something about what his ex told him Nako, kung nasan yung puso mo dun ka. No, it's really important to have that passion to really enjoy what you do in you know for work yes, and in your career as well so since we only have one <laughs> life so that is true know, we should do what makes us happy Exactly. A good balance, I believe. Yes. That's so, very important. It is. Now, I can't wait for the next one. Me too. So, I hope everyone is ready for our next speaker. I'm sure they are. So, Lulu, as a CS student, you know, we've... Direct Ken has mentioned, you know, what we can do. But how about you, not knowing exactly what to do with the, with the, the codes that you've been doing throughout college, uh, how do you think that should reflect your accomplishments? How do you present it in an interview, as an interview in a job, let's say? Yes, definitely. I have, you know, felt that, especially now that we're only a few weeks away from our internships. Mm-hmm. Which is why this topic will be talked about by our next speaker. So she will be presenting us with ideas and tips on how we should package our projects after completion and final thoughts on helping us gear up for work. And we've actually recently seen her in FUTech's recent workshop called Into the Code, the Introduction to Front-End Frameworks. That's right. So to tell you more about her, she started mm-hmm. working in 2018 as a human resource assistant for To Go Express. Then in 2021, she was a social media specialist and an IT support associate for Filta. Then, eventually became an application analyst for the same company. She is currently a technical community manager for Education PH, where she helped manage social media platforms, help increase the community reach, and utilize social media management and various automation tools. She has done many talks on CSIT courses, such as the fundamentals of web development, information security, database systems, and automation. A technical community manager and a content creator on YouTube, may we please welcome Ms. Athena Abe. Hi, everyone. How are you? And Hi, thank Ms. Athena. You Ember- Hello, Timothy. <laughs> Love the energy. Thank you for inviting me, guys. So let me first begin by sharing my screen. Ayan. All right. Thank you. And also, thank you to Derek Ken. I definitely uh, learned a lot then because with uh, the multimedia and the tech industry, it goes hand in hand then and there are similarities on how you can package yourself. And definitely, there's a lot the inspiration from his talk. So thank you so much. So in this uh, part of the talk, we'll be more focusing on the computer science and IT stuff. And 
I'm already introduced. I'm also an Angel Hack Ambassador. I'm a mentor at Hackathons. And I'm definitely a coffee, specifically a coffee call lover. Ayan. So before I begin, let me know in the chat who are CS and IT students. Uh, who are here with us today. Also for our Facebook Live viewers. Hi. Ayan. Okay, madame. Hello, Chester, Timothy, Tatiana. Ayan. Very good. Very active. All right. So, I just finished with my thesis. Actually, nung isang araw ko lang nalaman yung grade ko, guys. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was good to know. Now we are the uh, highest group who got our thesis grade. And Sobrang worth it uh, kasi yung thesis, totoo talaga yung sinabi na it's a very toxic part of your <laughs> computer science or IT journey, totoo. And before I give you a background on how to prepare your application or package, ayan, thank you, ayan, your project. So, of course, I'll be giving you a brief overview of the difference between thesis and capstone, specifically these, uh, our target audience for today is computer science and IT students. And then from there, I'll be giving you a roadmap on how you can start with project packaging. And of course, the, definitely the parts that you are looking forward to is how to prepare for the industry. What are the best practices to do after prod, uh, product or project development and setting up your portfolio? Okay, so disclaimer lang. You're ve I'm very happy that I'm able to share this knowledge with you guys kasi na nag-start ako ng thesis, hindi to tinuro sa amin and wala akong idea nito before. But a good thing about immersing myself in the industry as early as no third year ako, I was able to uh, gain those industry experience, those knowledge, and those skills that I can and happy to share with you today, today this afternoon. It's currently 12 midnight where I am right now. <laughs> So yeah, let's start with uh, differentiating thesis and capstone. We're going to look specifically, so my source is the CMO of CHED for Computer Science and IT and CS as well. Uh, both are aligned and focused on uh, creating solutions or uh, innovating something that is already existing. But to give them a difference of both, thesis is more focused on creating algorithms, theories, uh, solutions, and investigations. So if you're that uh, mga CS students dyan na nag-automata theory, ayan, discrete mathematics, definitely these are one of the uh, main uh, solutions or um, ways that we can come up with in our uh, projects or product. And for the IT and information system students here, uh, you are more focused on, so information systems are more focused on uh, business processes. So in here, IT kasi is more focused on what, uh, it's, it's focused on a specific organization or company, whereas kami kasi computer science students, based on my understanding, we're creating something for the benefit of the uh, liman cool. Parang it can be a solution to any type of organization or industry. Wherein IT or CS, it's uh, focused on a specific organization or company. So ayan siya. So next, um, I'll try not to go very technical then, since I definitely understand as a student, pag may nagtutok sobra technical din na naintindihan. So don't worry. I'm just going to show you um, also my experience then as an application analyst that identifying an end to end process in application packaging is very important. So ito kaya din naging magulo yung um, thesis development namin, kasi hindi namin to na process. So ay na nagawa. So. Better to um, carefully listen and take notes for this. So there are a lot of different uh, processes. And you know, you're definitely familiar with the different types of methodologies, uh, Scrum, Agile, Waterfall, mga ganyan. But in here, the first uh, step is to identify yung uh, project or product requirements nyo. So uh, I'll give you an example. So ang uh, thesis namin is we created a web application, a career decision support system for senior high school students. So isa ako sa unang batch ng K-12, to I shifted from STEM to TechBook, and madami akong classmates ngayon na hindi, uh, hindi nang galing sa uh, STEM strand or ICT merong ABM. So parang makikita pa lang doon ng senior high school tayo na 
hindi din talaga naging aligned yung path natin in com- when it comes to landing a or choosing a degree in technology. So with that, we created with that solution wherein we are basing it from the CHED CMOs. Also, may psychological ano din doon, tools kami na ginamit to identify on how accurate we can help the senior high school students identify kung saan ba nagmamatch yung skill set nila. Uh, and helping them recommend the top three programs that uh, they can choose from. So, yun siya. So, yun yung naging requirements namin. Our targets was senior high school students. Ayan. So, next tile. And with application packaging, uh, the main goal here in creating your web applications, game application, mobile application, is to cut down costs. As students, definitely, we don't really have much budget when it comes to our development and production. So it's a really big thing to learn about this application packaging. And it helps us reduce uh, time in uh, testing, in development, ayan. And with the requirements, it will be, will be more easy for us to uh, install these applications, especially if you're going to create a desktop app. Ayan. So for us, kasi, we didn't do the application because it's web app. So it's uh, we just send them the link and then they can directly access our application. So ayan siya. And less support. So um, automated na din. So kami, gumamit din kami ng mga automations if ever may mga queries, yung users, ganyan. So this can help mitigate issues and decrease risk, risk for disruption. So second part is to review and assess. So ano ba yung mga need natin na mag na information? Would, would you create an application that is static, that is information giving lang, or something that is dynamic na you will be getting information or data from the user? Ayan. So with that, there are uh, many software applications for your packaging, but speci- especially that I represent education and Amazon Web Services. I'll be giving you more examples of some technologies and solutions on AWS. So an example of this is to analyze and identify the system requirements of your application. Is An example here is Amazon Workspace Application Manager. So you don't have to do the, uh, these mundane tasks of uh, managing your application. So the cloud is the future na din kasi. So ito yung mga bagay na hindi namin masyado, di kami na-expose nung nagtitesis kami. It's very helpful to manage all of your applications in the cloud kasi, for example, what if na-corrupt yung application mo or yung package mo? Meron kang backup on a different region, mga ganong scenarios. So, I'll be showing you a video about Amazon Workspaces you, so you can learn more about it. The way people work and interact is changing. Employees and contractors are increasingly working remotely but they still need secure and reliable access to their desktops and applications. Customers are enabling this access with Amazon Workspaces. As a managed, secure, desktop-as-a-service solution, you can provision for just one or go up to tens of thousands of Windows or Linux desktops for remote and contingent workers around the globe. Amazon Workspaces provides each user with access to secure storage in the cloud and no data is stored on the local device, ensuring your organization's information is kept safe and protected. Your remote workers can use Amazon Workspaces with no complex licensing and no long-term contracts, making getting started simple. If you don't have an AWS account, you'll need to set one up before you can launch this service. Once you have your AWS account, begin by opening Amazon Workspaces from the AWS Management Console and click Get Started Now. Launch your quick setup and select the bundle that best suits your needs. Select Users, set up a password, and download the client. Once the setup is complete, sign in and your end users can start using their desktops right away to get their job done securely. Help your remote workers access a cloud desktop anywhere, anytime, and from any device with Amazon Workspaces. Ayan, an experience that I had before, kasi ay, may, for the first company that I worked for is uh, may pagka-startup siya. And I was, walang IT department nun, and I was the one who uh, started working for that department. So I started as an IT support uh, specialist where I am, 
uh, supporting the the employees mga laptops and kasi hindi wala pa kaming virtual desktop that time so naging uh, struggle siya kasi mag-isa lang ako and there are 200 employees that I'm helping uh yun naman araw-araw pero most of the time uh, simultaneously all at once kasi nga they're having problem with their applications and um services like this workspaces can definitely help then especially since we're currently evolving into working remotely kahit na face to face so um i was able to witness bago pa ako umalis na sa company na yon na they still have their laptops pero naka-connect siya sa virtual cloud so that is really amazing kasi they were open to that and it helped then uh, the company reduce less cost then ayan and another uh, example of a packaging tool is MSIX. So, at saan ni MSIX? Na, ano maya? So, this is an example of a packaging format. I won't go into detail, but this is on Microsoft. So, if you're going to search for software application packaging tools, there are different formats specifically uh, suited for Microsoft that can help you um, make sure that your uh, application package is uh, safe and secure. So, Ayan siya, aside from Amazon workspaces. Ayan. Usually kasi before, ang ginagawa ko lang talaga whenever I am um, preparing yung employee's laptop, I do kasi software and hardware before. And sobrang mundane niya, sobrang polit ulit, sobrang manual. I put it in a zip file, yung common natin na alam, and then I just uh, uh, compress and then uh, export, ganun. So, ayun siya. And next is package. So with package yun nga, you'll be able to identify the right deployment tool. So uh, imagine this, para ka lang nagpapadala uh, ng delivery, shops, ganyan. And then of course, you you would want to make sure if you're, for example, a seller, na well package yung ipapadala mo, yung product na nasa loob. So with this, in a virtual uh in a virtual space. It's uh, optimization for transportation and warehousing. So you would want the application that, that you have developed in production, safe siya, and um, less bugs ganyan, and less uh, maintenance or support. Ayan. So next is testing. Ayan, ito yung pinakamahalagang part din um, na na-experience ko and natutunan ko is bago ka mag-deploy or before putting your applications into the prod or production is make sure to uh, test it first. Ang naging experience ko kasi, we had a tight deadline um, on to create this application. I created a knowledge base then using SharePoint then to the employees. And we really had a tight deadline. I think that's something then, guys, if you're going to um, pursue that kind of a career in development, to always communicate with your stakeholders na hindi kaya. Alam mo yun, kaya, kaya na today yung mga ganun, di ba? So, um, Although I understand then na these, these applications and tools kasi are very essential and if as much as possible, kaya na din uh, ma-disseminate sa mga users. However, if tingin mo alanganin ka sa development process mo, especially if wala pang testing, ipaprod mo na agad, eh madami pang mga errors or madami pang fixes. So, um, ikaw din yung may hirapan kasi naka-live na yung ano mo, app mo, pero nag- uh, configure ka pa rin or nagde-debug. So, uh, yun lang yung cons doon. So, always adjust mo na yung timeline mo. Ang magandang practice ko si John, for example, if you can see yourself na able to, uh, pwede mo na i-live yung app mo in, let's say, a month. One month and one week. Uh, kung, uh, kung kaya mo siya gawin ng one month, konti ka pa na extension ng one day, parang ganun, parang to make sure everything is finalized. Ayan. Oh, so yun, pilot testing. Ipatest mo muna on a certain group of people before you uh, do it or deploy it live. And one example of testing and debugging is Amazon Code Deploy. Even if you're not, if you're um, uh, gaining experience then, you can do personal projects. As what as already mentioned, diba? you do personal projects that can help you also gain experience kahit hindi ka pa na ka, ano, sa industry. And with that, there's Amazon Code Deploy can help you with your personal project. Ayan, pwede mo lang i-connect yung mga uh, GitHub repo mo, create a bucket, an instance from a local file system. Can help you test and debug your uh, application. So here, 
is a video. The dream of the developer. Write code. Test it. Seamlessly push it in production. And repeat. But the reality isn't quite like that. Manually deploying to lots of servers can take a long time and often results in errors that can lead to downtime. Wiring together your own automated deployment process can be complex and hard to maintain. Wouldn't it be nice if you can automate the deployment of your application into production so you can rapidly release new features? Introducing AWS Code Deploy, a service that coordinates your application deployments and updates across a fleet of Amazon EC2 instances of any size. AWS Code Deploy fully automates your application deployments, getting rid of the need to do things manually. AWS Code Deploy works with any application files and deployment scripts, and it is also easy to integrate with your existing software release process or continuous delivery toolchain. The same setup code you use to deploy revision to your development instance for debugging is used to deploy to staging for testing and then used to deploy to production for release to customers. You can use whether you have a couple of instances or thousands because it removes the coordinating a deployment and keeping track of each instance. You can have the confidence that AWS Code Deploy will deploy the same application revision across all your different environments consistently. AWS Code Deploy keeps your application highly available by performing rolling updates across your fleet and tracking application health according to configurable rules. This helps keep your customers happy by avoiding downtime. And best of all, there's no additional charge for AWS Code Deploy. You just pay for the AWS resources needed to run and store your application. Visit the AWS Management Console to begin automating your application deployments today with AWS Code Deploy. Ayan. Thank you, AWS. Charot. Ayan. Okay, so next is configuration. Of course, definitely there are circumstances uh, in production. Di talaga may iwasan when you need to uh, manually intervene in, uh, in debugging then or identifying kung ano yung mga naging uh, issues, concerns, or restraint from the user. So in configuration, it's also important then na to always be consistent and with the updates and also, syempre, on the back end side of things, gumawa ka ng update. Also, don't forget to inform then your stakeholders or client or yung users na ito may nagbago, ito yung, mga nag, ito yung naging uh, fixes. Diba usually, pag nag windows update tayo, meron dong mga summer ng ginawa nila. So that is uh, how or that is when AWS config comes in. Dahil dyan, may video ulit tayo. AWS is constantly innovating to bring its customers the best choices in cloud services, resources, and software. Yet with so many custom options to choose from, it can be challenging to make sure your resource configurations are efficient, secure, and complying with best practices. Introducing AWS Config, an easy-to-use service where you can assess, audit, and evaluate the configurations for all your AWS resources. With AWS Config, you can define the policies and guidelines for your AWS environment and receive notifications notifications whenever a resources configuration deviates from these rules. And if any non-compliant resources are discovered, config provides automatic remediation so you can get back to compliant and secure status as soon as possible. This enables you to monitor security weaknesses and track whether or not your resource configurations comply with government regulations and best practices across all regions. You can also evaluate your existing configurations against desired ones, as well as continuously track any changes you make against your other AWS resources in order to better analyze efficiency and performance. AWS Config also features dashboard displays on your Config console, allowing you to view your compliance status and resource inventory at a glance. You can even integrate Config with other AWS services, so you can seamlessly track activity logs and specific events within your account. AWS Config empowers you to keep your configurations secure and up to date with the most efficient AWS solutions. Sign up and get started today. Ayan. So, I think one of uh, naging challenge ko din starting alone sa isang IT uh, department is I was not uh, exposed to these types of technologies kasi, syempre, when you're uh, tasked to spearhead 
the department before, syempre, ikaw yung kailangan ko talaga mag-research kung ano yung best solutions with the resources that we currently have. So I started with doing things manually, documenting things, configuring things, and uh, before what I started with is to uh, source for different vendors of the best uh, mga service management tools na pwede gamitin. And I didn't realize, ang dami din pala ni AWS. All in one platform siya. Ayan. So, next is, ayan na, deployment na. So, with deployment, ayan, uh, we also have this AWS CDK or Cloud Development Kit. And with that, uh, I'm uh, with AWS Cloud Pilipinas kasi we have free resources that you can learn and try these. So, currently kasi, um, mag mal malaking bagay din talaga yung cloud technology. And that is something that I'm currently practicing then kasi we had trouble um, naging mahirap sa amin yung pag-deploy or pag-host ng app namin. So, sinimulan lang namin siya sa pag-build ng project and then we put it in a name chip. Ayan, gumawa kami ng domain, SSL, that's it. Pero, lacking siya kasi paano mo mas, uh, uh, paano mo ma-assure na secure siya something like that. So, we had, um, we took more time in uh, debugging and securing kasi we weren't, uh, aware of these technologies. So here's a highlight of one of our events for AWS CDK. We're gonna learn all about improving DevOps with Infrastructure as Code, IAC in short, and we're also gonna know all about getting started with AWS CDK. We'll be talking about AWS CDK. I want to start a blog, so okay, uh, I will run WordPress, siguro. Kukuha ko ng some server somewhere, I will run, I will install PHP on it, tapos I'll start um, maybe a MySQL database, tapos papatakbo ko lang WordPress. You have to be able to design some form of architecture that will let you know. Kasi ang AWS CDK or yung AWS Cloud Development Kit, it's also infrastructure as well. Okay? And I think what really makes it special is that you can use normal programming languages. AWS CDK, it's just infrastructure as code, pero using a fluent programming language, di ba? Tapos, you're working with apps, stacks, and constructs. Yun lang yan. This is co-presented by Amazon Web Services and AWS Ciclab Pilipinas. It's over here, over here, over here, over here. Ayan. Puro ang dami ng ads ni AWS, ha? Pero baka magpamigay ako ng AWS credit. Ayan. Okay. So, ay, yun din, eh. Na, as na-mention uh, ng speaker that time, yung architecture. And malaking important din kasi sa thesis and capstone nyo is yung architecture. Kasi yun din yung magiging foundation nyo on creating your development projects. And doon magkakaroon din. Doon mababasyan yung uh, success rate ng deployment nyo. And uh, with that, there are many ways din talaga on how you can manage your productions and deployment using uh, the cloud. So, ayun, kasi um, nagkaroon lang kami ng fundamental knowledge when it comes to architecture na may client, nandito yung database, nandito yung server. But um, advice din talaga na, na sinasabi sa akin ng mga professionals is uh, to utilize these cloud technologies. Kasi yun nga, it's a big factor of... Uh, mitigation of risks. So in here, here is a highlight on how to build modern apps with containers. And welcome to the 27th episode of the Community Ignite series, Building Modern Apps with Containers. My name is Donnie Prokoso. I'm a AWS uh, Senior Developer Advocate offering for ASEAN. I'm super happy to be here again and share with you on how you can build applications with AWS. To win customers, they need to build better products. And to build up better products, they need to release features faster. And containers, as one of the modern technology, it can help us to manage all of these challenges. First, we have Amazon ECS for you who wants to deploy and operate your container apps. We also have EKS if Kubernetes is your preferred flavor. And you also have two options for hosting your container as application. If you want to have granular control, you can use Amazon EC2. And, and that's actually why AWS release AWS Copilot. It's a common LAN interface or CLI that you can interact in your terminal, which enables you to quickly launch and easily manage containerized application on AWS. This is co-presented by Amazon Web Services and AWS Ciclab Filipina. Ayan. Thank you, AWS. Ayan, okay. Wala nang video promise. Wala na ba? Ayan, promise lang ko wala na. <laughs> so, ito yung... Um, uh, just a uh, takeaway or overview of the software deployment best practices. So, very, uh, ano talaga, maganda din, um, 
maganda ding way to really be efficient when it comes to creating your applications or products is automation. So, um, you can use these deploy, uh, deployment automation tools such as ayan, AWS, also create a checklist, important din to, to uh, really identify kung ano talaga yung requirements of your product. Ayan, backup, product strategy, eto, uh, risk mitigation. There's also CICD, which means continuous integration and continuous delivery. So maganda dito habang nagde-debug ka, nakalive yung production, there is no downtime. It's a big factor talaga when it comes to prod yung uh, downtime. Of course, kailangan up and running while you are improving your systems. And proper communication, as what I have mentioned, there are I had these experiences na I wasn't able to meet the deadline properly kasi hindi pa talaga hindi pa talaga ako confident na up and running na yung app pero kasi gustong gusto na talaga ng stakeholder na ma-launch na which is alanganin so yun siya proper communication and of course always do research and identify madami din outside AWS services deployment tools that can help you be more efficient and reduce cost ayan all right, and overall, the goal of application packaging is cost, evaluation, yan, and up to date. So, the goal here is to reduce support because it's very manual, it's very mundane. Ayan, automation is the future and cloud din talaga. And there should always be an evaluation of the right process to use, identify the requirements, identify which tools, and always, of course, update your application review, update the standards and uh, the goals to meet the requirements. Ayan. Next. All right, ayan na. Don't worry about the technical stuff anymore. Ito na yung mga best practices to do after project development. So now we're going to um, focus then uh, from the technical side to us preparing for the tech industry. So, um, of course, in development, it's either it can either be you alone, like what I have experienced, or it can be working with a team. Ayan. So, the best practices for this is always um, learn about these resources ayan, and invest the right resources and in your team skills. So, kung alam mo lahin ka, like we did, kami ng mga thesis mates ko, we joined and ask for uh, advice or feedback from the tech community for how to upskill and improve kung paano namin ma-meet yung requirement which is to create a career decision support application. Ayan, identify the right process. Ayan, systems development life cycle, you uh, either identify which is the right process to use. So I have a question for you guys. Currently, what are you leaning towards to waterfall or agile methodology? Ayan, let me know. Sa mga ITCS dyan. If you're familiar with this, or if you're not familiar with the term, you can take a guess. Ano yung sa tingin niyo yung best uh, process? Waterfall or Agile? Agile. Agile. How about the others? Agile. Anybody else? Ayan. Very good. I think from your answers, you're very aware of the best practice. Ayan. I hope you also put that into practice. Kami kasi... Nakaready na lahat, pati yung uh, calendar, everything, pero it, it's all over the place. So, that's lesson learned yan. So, next from that is to estimate. Ayan, as I have mentioned, based on my experience na uh, I hope maiwasan nyo, is yung deadlines. Always communicate properly talaga. Always budget, ayan, um, resources and uh, efforts. Ayan. So, syempre, hindi ang common kasi sa thesis, di ba? Ay ikaw marunong mag-code, ikaw na diyan, ikaw design ganyan ganyan. Tama so, ikaw na taga timpla ng kape, ikaw taga luto ng pansit canton, ganun di ba? <laughs> Pag gumagawa ng thesis. Ayan. So, syempre, of course, delegate your tasks properly. Kami kasi lahat din naman kami we started from scratch. We don't have that solid background when it comes to coding, pero dalawa sa amin nung ka-group ko talagang um, mas expertise yung development and design. However, really, we really pushed our uh, group mates to also um, upskill themselves into learning into coding. So, hinati talaga namin. Also, um, you you also have to make sure when in terms of ayan, production deployment kasi hindi naman perfect na kapag deploy ka na all good na syempre you have to maintain it, ayan, configure it, ayan. I, so, with that, kailangan naka uh, handa kung sino yung assigned person for it. 
So, identify kung kaya, kakayanin niya ba to or if it's something na need niya ma-experience. And of course, ayan, don't forget to document. Ayan, lagi natin nakakalimutan. Document, document, document. Yung mga um, learnings nyo, project learnings. Kahit sa, sa, sa isip natin, simple, yung mga re, uh, mga reflections sa really big a part that can help you improve not only individually but for your future future projects as well. Ayan. So I think you're already familiar with this and uh, majority of you guys, 100%, are into the Agile process. And take it one step at a time. Ayan na. Ayan. And other things, kasi yan, testing, use automated tools for validation. Madami na dyang free resources for automation. And then tracking. Ayan. Siyempre, you need to celebrate your small wins, track your efforts, and better assess kung kakayanin ba ng team nyo or ng teammate nyo itong uh, need na task. Siyempre, then to reduce downtime. So, saluhan na lang talaga when it comes to thesis and capstone. And of course, always be open to change. Ayan, there's a, there's a change control board na uh, tinatawag. It is a method of accepting um, yung mga biglaang changes. And facilitate smooth the uh, inclusion ayan so with the change kasi di talaga to may iwasan but there are certain ways na you can assess if this change needs to happen ba talaga so there are certain requirements na hindi naman uh, there are certain hindi man requirements but there are certain features na gusto nila ilagay na hindi naman talaga need something like that and of course yeah as i have mentioned learnings always share what you have learned Ayan, communicate then with your thesis mates. Ayan. Alright, ito na yung pinaka-inaabangan nyo. Ano naman, yung how would you build your portfolio in a CSIT industry? Ayan. And big thing talaga, guys, ang LinkedIn. I'm telling you also, Direct Ken has mentioned it. If you're the type of person who's still figuring out what career you want in computer science or IT, it's a really best practice to start building your main portfolio on LinkedIn. And here you'll be able to highlight um, your uh, one of your, if you're especially if you're a BS org life ka or a student leader or um, you have uh, different org affiliations, you can definitely include it on that. Ayan, mga volunteer work nyo. Ayan, school. And yung mga featured nyo. Dito sa featured, if you're a developer, a, gra a game developer, graphic designer, multimedia artist, business analyst in the field, you can definitely put there in the featured yung link. As have mentioned, di ba, ni Direk, para makita ng mga hiring managers, CEOs, yung uh, inyong mga works dyan. So, this is for uh, in general. And, and ako kasi, as a content creator, I have a personal branding. It's also maganda din to as if you want to become a social media manager or a content creator, you have your own personal branding. What makes you uh, stand out? Ayan. Okay. So next is I'm going to show you a sample of a portfolio from a UI UX designer and also a developer at the same time, Art San Diego. So let me just, I bago yung GitHub. Uh, share ko lang yung tab ko. One moment. Okay. New window. Ayan. Okay. Ang cool nito, guys. Wait lang. Ito na. Hihi. <laughs> share. Okay. Let me know then if you can see it. Can you see it na? Yes, we can po. Yan. Okay, refresh ko lang kasi ako din na amaze eh. So, Art San Diego is a UI UX designer. Ayan, he's a creative front-end web developer and UI designer. So, it's very cool. Uh, I don't know how he did this. Pero I think, ayan o, oh, may pa. Oh, oh, bongga. Oh, ayan, aura. <laughs> ayan, I asked permission go lang dahi. Uh, I told him I would... I use this portfolio as an example. So if you're an aspiring UI UX designer, you can definitely check his portfolio. So uh, same then, diba, in a general uh, description of what you'll be needing in a portfolio. So ito art portfolio to in a dev. You can link here your GitHub, Behance, other social links. So you can start, of course, with about yourself, your profile. So ayan siya, nagkwento siya about himself and his experiences. And when he started coding. And he also has this brand. I di ko lang kung paano press the liberal brand yan. And here he also linked his GitHub and Behance. 
Ayan, mga multimedia, ganyan. Pinakita niya din yung um, brand identity niya, design. And, ayan. Nag-design din siya sa Beyond the Box. Wow. Ayan, yung mga previous projects niya. Gumawa siya ng case study for Notion. Ayan, bank. Ayan, logo. Something in your mind. Ayan. Then, ito na yung uh, hire me part niya. And his footer. Ayan, experience. Ito yung pina. Ayan. So, in for all graphic, multimedia then and developers, always include the text or tools you use. And as mentioned then by direct can never put uh, abbreviations. Lagi mo ilalagay yung buo. Kasi some technical recruiters don't really, don't uh, understand then pag sinabi mong, uh, yan, PSJS. Yan. So, ipuput siya ng buo. Ito Adobe as a, uh, Ano naman to understood na Photoshop and Adobe XD. Ayan. Ayan. So, those are the examples. Okay, let me change my screen back to my presentation. All right. So, next naman is, of course, GitHub for developers, whether you're a web developer, developer, mobile, or game. So, here is mine. So, treat it as something like a web portfolio. Put uh, uh, in a brief introduction of yourself. So, I just put it here yung mga uh, current roles ko. Ayan, dito, dito ako gumagawa ng mga test projects ko in uh, my organization sa thesis namin and repo. You can check it out. I created my first progressive web app uh, dyan. And uh, madaming versions ng thesis. So, the point na nilagay ko na lang mga graduate kami 2022 and hopefully we'll graduate in June. Ayan, manifesting. And then, dito nagawa ko ng mga CSS files. I did my copy ko, a uh, mock-up site there. So, ayan siya. You can definitely check that out. So, for devs, yan, GitHub talaga. And if you're into digital arts, uh, na-mention na din to ni Direct, diba? malaking bagay ang art station. It's definitely true. And I'll be showing you an example of a portfolio by Carl Aaron Bauer. Okay, I'll just put this here. Very connected din eh, multimedia, computer science. Kasi computer science also focuses on the graphic uh, graphic uh, design, computer graphics. So in here, ayan. So he's an art director. He's also a lead CGI and creative. He's based on LA. Ayan siya. Ito yung mga works niya. Ayan. Di ba pa napaka-realistic, napaka uh, galing. So, art station is the uh, key if you uh, want to pursue or have a career in digital arts. And you can check uh, more of that in his site. And and going back, ito naman, game development. If you want to have or create a portfolio or start your career in game development, ito naman, another example. This is also a web portfolio. Change lang ulit ni Ayan. So, there are different ways. Common kasi when we do our layouts in web design, nandito yung header, navbar, tapos footer sa baba. Pero as you observe with art, di ba, yung kanya nasa gilid yung social links niya, ito namang si Delonggo, nasa left side lahat. So, it depends on uh, your creative preference then. But mostly, it's either, ayan, at the side, at the top, and of course, the footer, and your social links at the bottom. And nandito yung nav links. So, home, so, uh, artist siya with three years of experience with animation and game development. Dito din nakalagay yung kanyang tools na ginagamit. Ayan, Unity. Di ako familiar dyan, but if you're a game dev uh, aspirant, ayan. 2D work. Let me go here. And lahat ng 2D work niya, makikita niya dyan. Ayan, 3D work. Ayan. So, uh, ano din, ang common advices then when it comes to your portfolio and if you're starting is to really showcase your best, at least three best personal projects. It doesn't necessarily have to be from a client. You can, uh, kahit simpleng uh, landing page yan, kasi, kasi yun yung, ano may, yun yung start mo eh, into creating more projects and improving uh, your skills. So, ayan siya, sample. So, for me kasi, I am uh, in the States and natutunan ko din in the Philippines kasi when I, when I used to apply to jobs may picture yung resume ko pero dito pala bawal hindi bawal pero 
hindi recommend kasi um, from what I have learned, parang may racism daw. Of course, pero talaga dito racism. Pero kasi pag nakita ng hiring manager yung picture mo, ganito, pag nalaman mo gantong race ka. So dito, um, I'm currently looking for a job while working in the Philippines. Walang picture. Ito nga, cute. Siguro, ayan, mga ganyan. So it depends then talaga on where you're applying. But here in the States, uh, hindi advisable na may picture ka. Ayan. So same then sa mga need um in also in this tech field just put your education um your GPA ayan um also yung contact details main location profile and technical skills or tools that you use ayan and what else ano pa ba yung different sa atin Ayan, when you um if you want to do your web app portfolio, you can definitely put a link to download your PDF file or also redirect them on LinkedIn like this one. So ayan siya, open to work si Dylan Gold. Ayan. Contact. Ayun siya. Ito iba-iba yung pages na ginawa niya, but you can mas simple yung kay Art kasi isang baksa ka na siya. Yun din common din na na-observe ko. Ayan. All right, okay, uh, almost at the end. And ito lang, um, ay, bali, ata sinishare ko. Ito, balik ko lang. Ayan. Okay, so here are the takeaways for your portfolio tips as a COMSA and IT student. Of course, uh, with your uh, profile, ayan, introduce yourself and your uh, affiliation and your uh, what you're most passionate at. Showcase your best projects technologies or stacks that you use. Ayan, kahit HTML, CSS pa yan, NJS, okay na okay yan. Kasi always, you should always be open to upskilling. Yeah, explore view, explore view, JS, React, JS, ganyan. And of course, your social and contact links. Ayan. And of course, that ends my presentation. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm definitely interested to uh, learn uh, your feedback for my talk on what you I want to learn pa in the future session. So uh, I'll be putting the link. Ayan na, in the chat. Thank you, Arian. Ayan. Or you can scan the QR code. And with that, if you want to learn more, I have more events tomorrow about introduction to cybersecurity, about service management operations, and back-to-back -back events. I also have non-technical events at the end of the month. Ayan, Young, young Woman in Tech for Happy Women's Month pala, guys. And... Currently mentoring a hackathon, uh, Smart Sustainable Cities. Ayan siya. And of course, where to find me, you can check more of my previous webinars and content on my YouTube channel to learn more. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm looking forward to seeing your LinkedIn. I am more than happy to help you build your network if you're interested. You can also find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Ayan. I also do other videos na hindi tech. So if you want to be entertained, you can just check my channel. And with Education and AWS Ciclab, we have uh, more events about AWS here. You can also check it on our social media links. Ayan, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Miss Athena. Oh, we, we are so sorry for keeping you up so late. <laughs> no, it's okay. This is the usual time that I work. Oh, that's great. Um, so I guess we could proceed to the question and answer portion. All right. Yes, we are. So we're now we're open, opening the floor for questions. Uh, the link is in the chat if you want to send your questions in. So for first question, all right, so someone asks, I think design and art portfolios are different for IT and CS. For non-design specializations, does a portfolio have to be more on practicality or more on impressions? Uh, it's definitely uh, more on impressions. As I have mentioned, the uh, best way to impress your hiring future company or hiring manager is to showcase your uh, personal projects, especially what you're uh, currently interested in. Ako kasi hindi ko pa talaga gusto, ay, hindi ko pa talaga alam yung gusto kong career path, but I'm leaning towards being a CS professor and uh, cybersecurity analyst. So, that's why I do more on content creation. Habang natututo ako, sinishare ko din yung uh, natututunan ko. Always uh, a big way to have this impression is how active you are in the tech community. Join 
uh, dev conferences if you want to become a developer, engage and connect with different developers. And from there, you'll be able to uh, join uh, events and that will lead you to your achievements. That will really be helping you with having more impressions. Wow, thank you for that answer. Yes. And then so, the next question is actually, I'm actually quite interested in, um, with what you're going to answer here. So someone asked, how do you decide um, how do you decide, Po, when you're proficient enough in a technology or language to put it in your portfolio resume? Uh, come again, how do you... How do you decide when you should be putting a certain language or technology in your resume based on your proficiency? Does that matter? Or should you just put it no matter what your proficiency is, I guess. Yeah, um, I think if you're referring to the specific uh, tech stack or language, definitely because there are uh, current uh, openings or job opportunities for a specific developer. Uh, uh, when I started to say in the industry, naging a buzzword din ang full stack dev eh. Sa amin, di kasi namin alam na may ganun, may front end, may back end. But if you're leaning towards on citing a specific language or tech stack, definitely do so kasi madami din opportunities and mas maganda kasi mas specialized na yung skill mo. Currently, what I'm observing right now, ang daming in-demand jobs for Python developers if that's what you're into. But yeah, um, it's okay to uh, do that naman. Kasi mas specialized siya. So, mas mananarrow din down yung pag-search nung um, HR kung na ito looking forward na looking sila sa ganito specific technology. So, yeah. Alright. Thank you so much for that. And for our next question, so someone asked, I've seen how Microsoft, Adobe, and other software package but never a website packed into like that. So what do you think is the best way to make money out of creating a website? So the best way to make money out of creating a website is you it all starts with creating your personal projects and then uh, showcasing your services. And of course, of course, that's that's the start of leading your journey into freelancing then or before you um apply to a specific uh, company but another way of creating money out of a website is affiliate marketing or uh, connecting with uh, your network to uh, really promote then your services mo always i think the best way then for uh having more clients for web developers if you're doing uh freelance is to um yeah yung Always ask for feedback, yung rating, and from there you'll get more uh, clients, partners. Always you can in your if you're if you're asking sa main website kung paano ka kita dun sa website mo. Ayan, there's ads, sponsors, and partners. So if you're going to observe din yung mga websites, may mga ads. So dun sila nag uh, kumukuha na revenue generating. Ayan. All right, thank you for that. I guess it's a bit a similar um, or related question rather. Any advice on how to advertise a product or a project naman? Ayan, as a former uh, social media specialist, the best way for, I've, I've observed, the best way for developers to really advertise their uh, product or project is to really uh, put their portfolio out there, put their services out there. There, there are certain developers now exploring content creation uh, like I do, like other developers do, they show their platform, they show their skills through creating content, whether it may be on Facebook, on Reddit, on YouTube, or on TikTok. So definitely one of the best niche for developers to showcase their work is on Facebook groups and uh, TikTok. Madami din talaga. Big factor on how you can advertise talaga is TikTok. Oh wow, TikTok talaga is, is the new ano, thing na now, no? <laughs> Everything yes. is going through TikTok. Any product product or even projects that I've, yeah, I've noticed that as well. Um, I guess the next question is more about your stories earlier. So you've mentioned that you uh, were part of like a, I guess a startup, kind of like mm-hmm. a startup with 200 employees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you were, uh, you were the only person there for the IT department, Mike. Yes. <laughs> Did you have you ever encountered like a time where you just 
couldn't solve the problem? Uh, yes. Uh, at the first, kasi syempre where you're beginning parang lost ka. And it's syempre mm-hmm. when you're starting a job in the industry, it feels overwhelming. Kasi doon mo marirealize na pala, ala ko hindi pa pala yung pinaral ko. Parang totoo. Mm-hmm. Kasi it, it totoo yung sinasabi nila talaga in the tech industry, learning never stops. And uh, if you want to pursue a career in dev, in IT, in administration, um, kailangan talaga always mag continuous learning siya and ang naging experience ko parang um, when the manager that time handed me na ito yung mean mo gawin ganito paano mo i-improve tong system namin paano mo isosolve tong operations and how would you automate things na wala naman ako dati alam sa automation so that became a challenge for me and what I do is I never stop doing research I never stop communicating and asking help from the community of which of what are the best tools to use especially for a startup kasi uh, hindi na hindi natin na consider diyan talaga is resources budget and time at the end mm-hmm. of the day going back to software packaging how are you be able to make things efficient kasi at ang end goal naman diyan is hindi lang product but the solution to the problem. Kumuha ka nga ng product pero hindi naman naging effective wala din nagsayang ka lang ng resources. Yeah that's mm-hmm. true. Um, wait, just a follow-up, Lulo. Sorry. Um, yeah. So regarding that, does it does it really matter that you don't have much qualifications for the position? I mean, you're it's the same field, but you don't have. Let's say, I mean, you mentioned that you didn't know much about automation before. So was that the issue with the employer that you didn't know much? Okay. No, because I uh, honestly I really got lucky din kasi on how I ha- I landed a career even as a third year computer science student. My first job is uh yun nga nakita niyo ba social media specialist ako. It's more on marketing. Eh kasi mm-hmm. um ang back story ko kasi on how I got my first job as a CS student is they invited me to do a talk about front end development. As a CS student, I didn't know um syempre pag ininvite ko sa talk magpapaisip ako, sabi ko, bakit ako, CS student ako, hindi naman ako front-end developer, di ba? Parang ano na lang ko dito. Pero, that time, I took the risk. I love doing research din talaga and sharing the knowledge. So, I discovered Figma. So, I did the talk din kanina umaga about Figma. That, that uh, really helped me on kung saan ako ngayon. <laughs> Ayan, pero, wow. ano, um, magandang prototyping tool siya and it definitely helped the community of front-end uh, developers. And uh, from there, kasi they really saw na passionate ako on upskilling myself. Uh, it doesn't, hindi naman nagtatapos na porkit wala kang alam, wala na. Siyempre, lahat ng bagay na tututunan yan. And ang maganda din is to expose yourself for mentors that can help you learn more uh, with the right path and tools. So, um, yun nga, nag-start ako social media specialist and then a few months, I became um one of the people to start the IT department and ang tawag namin doon operational intelligence wherein where um, our purpose for the company is to create solutions and optimize yung uh, automation of each department so we created ay yun nga pinag pinaaral sa akin self study ang power apps i created mm. an app without coding also did sharepoint development so youtube talaga youtube stack overflow <laughs> yan talaga yung mga best friend natin documentation sa ms ms community so yun talaga yung mga best resources ko that helped me started then upskilling kasi yan mga bagay na hindi tinuturo sa school i think mm. ang na-apply ko when it comes to app development is yung uh, data structures and algorithm and yung logical that really helped me talaga it's a very, very important uh, foundation if you're going to pursue a career in dev. Wow, that's so great to know. Because obviously, a lot of us are going to be working soon for our internship. And, you know, there's many concepts that were that we knew way back first year, second year, and third year, fourth year. We, we don't really remember much anymore. So yes. I guess now that you've, that you've said that it's, it's supposed to be like a learning process, the work itself, having to to study what you need to know um, mm-hmm. every step of the way. I guess that really does help us. So yeah, uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, Lulu, you had the question. Uh, yes. So I definitely agree with Figma. So it also helped us a lot with some of our projects, especially like, um, like prototyping and especially when you mentioned Stack Overflow. So I feel like I'm always there. <laughs> especially with projects and so you have a lot 
of experiences and I want to ask how do you keep yourself motivated? Um, how I um, uh, hmm. Ayun, um, based on sa mga nabanggit kasi one of the things that I the reasons why I do what I do is um, I don't Uh, settle for mediocrity because I always want to do uh, the best as much as I can. And yun nga, I, kung naalala ko, nabanggit na din kanina na we only have one life to live din talaga. So, um, why uh, waste it? And one of the factors that really keep me going and motivated is the community. Kasi I understand as a student, naiintindihan ko din kasi currently I'm working pero my classmates are doing their OJT and one of my thesis mates are sabi, ah, aja buti na lang talaga na nag-self-study tayo kahit ang hirap kasi dito sa work, um, all, all one man team daw siya doing the designing, the development and everything. And ayun nga, I helped her um, to be immersed in these uh, communities na pwede mong pagtanungan. So, it's very empowering talaga to enable yourself to join these communities with professionals that can uplift you. Kasi students nga tayo and we have, madami pa tayong dapat matutunan and uh, I think it's all about the mindset kasi I know it's definitely scary especially for you guys na graduating and starting their, in their internship. It's gonna be difficult. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's gonna be a challenge. But um, kung pursigido ka, masipag ka, and you have these goals, um, na, you're one step closer then talaga to achieving um, what you want to become. Always be open to take the risk and be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Ayan, yun talaga. Kasi ako yun nga, wala akong alam sa front end. Pero nag-risk ako, natutuwa ako, inaral ko, and then I shared it to the community. So, thank you so much for answering. And yes, so, I've definitely uh, felt that during these past years, especially when my code isn't working. Yeah. So, I definitely agree that it's all like mentally, like your mentality with the problem and you have to push yourself to do the best you can so thank you so much now oh, i feel like there's you've you've been through so much miss atina that i feel like i want to ask more about you know your experiences you know early on in the industry as a student um but i guess we don't have much time but I, I, another question I, that i want to ask is Similar with Derek earlier, um, was there ever an experience in the workplace where you felt like it was extremely unbearable that you just had to leave? Like, yeah, definitely. That point? Yeah, especially because um, since we're in we're in the topic of CS and IT, it's very it's a male dominated industry. But Sakto Women's Month, it's yun talaga is one of the um, challenges that I experienced. Ko is being a woman in tech a young woman in tech specifically na student ka kasi syempre pag pag tinignan ka sa student ay wala pa yang alam may may wala naman yang experience parang kasi yun din yung ibang miss ano tingin nila sa akin kasi di ba nagpa public speaking ako mm-hmm. and uh, ayun nga student student pa din ako yeah pero yun i didn't think of it as something to pull me down kasi it's really empowering that I am able to share my knowledge kasi tayo yung nagkakaintindihan eh, na yung struggles natin as students iba, kas, iba na kasi yung point of view ng professionals iba, iba na sa industry but I definitely understand the struggles of students especially on thesis on how we're trying our best especially learning online to survive kasi ang hirap talaga matuto kasi akala nila pag CS ka ay online madali na lang sa inyo type type na lang kayo dyan ganyan ganyan no? <laughs> yeah kasi iba iba tayo ng learning strategy. So, I definitely understand then yung challenges and also being exposed to the industry really helped me be able to share these experiences with you guys. Kaya, that didn't, ano, pero I think the best um, advice that I can give you guys is to always look for growth in a company. Um, you There are a lot of opportunities Um, pero kung hindi, there's no room for growth and upskilling, lalo na kasi minsan sa IT management or IT support, paulit-ulit yung ginagawa mo, solve these problems, ganyan-ganyan. I think ang natutunan ko, kaya din I am working on a different company na is I continuously look for growth. 
salary nandiyan yan eh, di ba na mention na ni Direk Ken, malaki nga kinikita mo, di ka naman masaya or hindi ka mm-hmm. naman nag-grow. So, ayun din talaga, as a working uh, professional peace of mind, promise talaga, and character and how you deal with people, how you communicate with people, that's really, hindi lang technical skills talaga in the industry of tech and arts. It's uh, soft skills din on how you deal with mm-hmm. people, how you interact, how you communicate with your stakeholders, especially when in terms of your application. So, yun siya. Kasi tayo in tech, we continuously learn and it's very it's a very big thing for us to upskill. So, if feel mo if you're working for someone na, na hinihinder or mm-hmm. yung uh, ganong growth mo, uh, it's better to look for other opportunities. And it's definitely madami. Just have to ask in the community and they will help you naman. So, would you say there's no shame in... Um transferring to another company. Uh wala naman kasi they asked <laughs> they uh, kasi before I left, they asked me kasi na um since I migrated here in the states, uh, uh what are the next steps kasi uh, it's different na and the cost of living is very expensive here. So mm-hmm. paano na yung remuneration ko? Paano niya na yung, kasi dati yung uh binigyan nila ako ng equipment, may monitor ako, may laptop ako as a dev. So yun sa paano na yun, di pinadala ko na yun doon. Tapos, sabi ko, I'm looking for more growth. Of course, double the salary. Mm. And ganon, and other factors. Yun talaga. So, pero hindi nila kasi kayang ibigay. And if hindi nila kayang ibigay, it's okay. I had fun in that company. Maganda yung work culture. Pero, as if, you're, if I'm going to look at my own factors, and I believe I can do more than this, definitely open yourself to other uh, doors. I agree. I agree. There's so much. Thank yes. you for that answer. So definitely, especially with the, you know, if it's, it's already toxic, then it's better to grow in another environment. And yes. uh, so, and for our last question, so for IT and CS with zero work experience, what message or advice do you have for them that you think may help them start from scratch? Ayan, always, always practice, discover on your technologies, the technologies, upskill, ayan, always don't be shy to ask help from your peers or other uh, professionals. A big thing talaga that helped me is to join a community kasi yun din yung support system way. There are a lot of, um, students who are reaching out to me na they want to drop out na daw kasi hindi daw nagiging effective yung pag-aaral. Honestly guys, to tell you, I also felt that nung third year ako and last year, kung kailan kung kailan final thesis defense na sabi ko, gusto ko na mag-drop to the point na nanonood na how to drop college YouTube videos. Ganyan, promise! Ayan, tapos, pero nandito na ako, di ba? Bakit pa ako susuko? Malapit na ako, konting kembot na lang. So, that motivated me kasi may support system. Ay, nagpost ako actually sa Facebook page ko. Sabi ko, what are your thoughts on dropping out? Is it worth it? Is it not? I asked a lot of professionals and they really give great insights na um, it's best if you have the means to not drop out kasi malaking bagay din talaga ang my degree and I totally, I'm, I'm experiencing it right now. Hindi ako, hindi madaling makahanap ng work here kasi majority na hinahanap nila is my degree. Pero totoo nga, as long as you have set of skills in tech, madami na din open to uh, hiring you if wala kang degree. Pero, Other than that, um, if kaya mo naman daw ipagpatuloy, ituloy mo. And that's what I did. And na yun, nakapasa naman ako sa thesis. And um, ayun din, ano din eh, um, kasi sayang din yung iba. They have their scholarships and they're thinking na mag-drop out. And I think yun din yung nakakalungkot kasi with the system is na experience ko din yan first hand na hindi din ako masyado natututo kasi I understand it's very fast paced right and mm-hmm. syempre ang ituturo talaga natin ay, ay ituturo nila sa atin is yung uh, fundamentals which is I totally understand but I think what's lacking is yung hands on experience collaboration and the different tools kasi tulad nyo Figma di pala may ganyan na pala or automation tools kasi tayo we're used to doing everything from scratch merong uh Merong mga bootstrap that can help us our CSS, di ba? Mga ganyan. Sa industry ko lang din yan natuto. So, um, if you're feeling 
if na demotivate ka from your ACADS, I do n- I really recommend you to keep going kasi there are communities that can help you out skill outside school. So ang ginagawa nila ngayon, meron silang learning sessions out after their school or outside their shift. So yun siya kasi that's really empowering. That's what we are currently doing in the community and we are here to um, help you then to continue. Wow, thank you. That was such an awesome advice. Honestly, yes. really appreciate it. Is so Athena? I, I definitely relate to the thoughts of dropping out or changing <laughs> to another course, especially yes. uh, when you're already, you know, in your last year of university. Mm-hmm. So yes, thank you so much once again, Miss Athena, and for not only you know answering those questions, giving advice. But for such an informative presentation on AWS services, cloud technology, and Mm -hmm. more. And so that's why we want to commemorate this certificate of recognition to you. Absolutely. This award is presented to Ms. Athena Abe for imparting invaluable insights and knowledge during the Emerge 22 PBL4 BMA CS IT students webinar about the topic Going Pro for CS and IT, How to Package Your Project and Yourself. So given this 18th day of March 2022, signed by Dr. Jofferson Bombasi, CCSMA Director and Engineer Inaldo Muli, Senior Director for Higher Education. And now for the picture taking, may I request, Ms. Athena? <laughs> All right. And if Dr. Ray Abahan is here or Dr. Jock Bombasi, feel free to join us. All right. In three, two, one. There we go. Thank you so much, Miss Athena. Thank you for having me emerge. Yes, thank you so much, Miss Athena Abe. And we really appreciate you being here with us today and sharing your experiences and knowledge with us. So, and for students, please do answer the CSAT feedback form that Miss Athena shared with us. And you'll see the link in the chat box. Yes, everyone, please do answer the form. That is really important. All right, wow. I feel like time was was moving so fast, Lulu. Yes, that's true. So, um, you know, I didn't really notice that it's already been, you know, hours with all the um, you know, we've learned so much. And... We've learned a lot, yes, absolutely. We're almost the end of our event, and we have actually have one more that we're going to announce later. But we want to say that we want to thank everyone for joining us in this wonderful event. And we hope you all had a great time joining us today. Yes, and now before we end, we would like to ask all of our fellow Tamaraos to join us in singing the FEU Tomorrow will be another exciting day as we join Mr. Fitz Villafuerte 
in his talk entitled Demystifying the Cryptocurrency Space. The event, the event will start at 8 a.m. So do set your alarm clocks and don't miss day two of Emerge 22 webinar. That's correct, Tim. And we would like to take this opportunity to provide everyone with the link for the evaluation form for day one of this event. The link and the QR code are both displayed on the screen and links will also be provided in the chat box. Again, make sure to answer the evaluation form today in order to get your certificate on the final day of the webinar. Be quick as the evaluation form will automatically stop accepting responses at exactly 4 p.m. So you have 15 minutes to fill out that form, guys. So once again, this is Tim Gingona together with Lulu Nerpio. This has been part one of Emerge 22. Goodbye, everyone, and see you all tomorrow. Recording stopped.